and welcome back to the table. How's it going, Wonders? Uh, it's been a week. If it's been a day. No, I've it's never, been a week. Yeah, I've never really understood that phrase, actually. What, what, like, it's been a week if it's been a day. I think like, that means like it's been a day, but it feels like a week. Or maybe it's been if a I've week, told you but once, it feels I've told like you a, a day. thousand times. I mean, I was on vacation, so that works with me. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's either less than a day or more than a week, but nowhere in between. But can't be. Yeah, yeah. If, and if it's longer than that, well, then you're just done anyway. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's been at point? least one day. Hmm. So, uh, <laughs> we have an unconscious tiger in front of us, uh, but one other thing we have in front of us here <gasps> is something that was sent in. Uh, we picked it up on Friday. Yes. But it said specifically, don't. Touch me until Tuesday. We had to touch the box. I'm yeah, I had to touch the box. I hope you already broke the golden rule. Something, but it does say open at the table, and okay. I will do that uh, from our dear friend Helena from Seaside, California. Woo, Cali. Let's take a look at what's in here. Looks like a bunch of crochet. Got a little, uh, got a little bomb here. Ooh, ooh, yeah. explosives. Ooh, a bottle. Uh, a bottle containing bottle with a, it. Possibly, it says. Uh, yeah, it's, a, it's a vial of hit. Oh. No, because I, I actually know of these. I kept uh. the secret from you guys. Oh man! It's ah. a little uh, crocheted mouse. Huh? It looks like. A couple of crocheted mouse. Hold on, let me. Are these are smell these because I might actually know who this is from if they are filled with. Oh yeah, there's catnip in that. Ah. Mm. So they're kitty toys. That'll, that'll be for you, then, being the cat owner at the table. I do own sure. cats. We also have a bag of dice Ooh. for whomever should want. I've Although there's collected. probably a letter here. Yeah, here we go. Okay. Uh, please state if anyone has a food allergies before I send food-related things. From Helen and Nix. I don't know. More anything. stuff coming soon. Cool. I'm we also have garbage that tastes bad, so send good things. And this is uh. a cool thing that I was looking <laughs> at, but we got Pliskin. <gasps> Pliskin! Oh, yeah. boy Pliskin. Not sure how well that's showing up on the camera, but we're doing best. Here, actually, we can pass it over to Zito, and he can show it yeah, up on yeah, the close-up camera. Zito has the zoomed-in yeah, camera. Kind of, oh, that is amazing. Is there a particular adjective that you would use to describe that? Um, what's something shark-related? Uh, it's, like, really awesome, and sharks have big jaws, so I'm going to say neat. Neato. Yeah. It's uh, real cool. Well, you want to see something else pretty neato. <laughs> ben, take a look inside there. Ooh. Foreshadowing, it says. Uh oh. It's a tiny little wooden coffin. Let's see what's inside. And within, we've an got an actual usable oh, man. character for you. Look at that. A little centaur boy. A little Eloy. Little Eloy boy. <laughs> got some more catnip mousies. Oh, man. And there's, there's accessories in this little tube. We got. We got a flute. We got a, a bugle, like trumpet. We got a drum. We got a ch uh, we got a chubby spearman here too. Ooh. Just in case we ever happen to run into a bunch of whalers. And those don't exist. They're only on the moon. Specifically to myself, to Grant, <gasps> to Zito, Gadzooks, and to Ben. <laughs> and Ooh. nothing for Ben. Thank you. Ben, you got Eloy. That's what you get. <laughs> and we also have a dice bag with something else in it here. Hold on. There's I feel I feel something. The gifts they keep on a coming. Well, if this does not scream Ezra, I don't fucking know Is what does. Is that the cap? Oh my goodness! <laughs> I took a brief sojourn into Assassin's Creed. Or wait, no, that's hair, not not a hood. Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That looks awesome. I like that quite a bit. It's got a dope as fuck gain. Ah, uh, here we go. Uh, Zito, here's your Pliskin and his Wear Shark miniature. Ah, uh, it's supposed to be Pliskin. Gotcha. Yep. Uh, David Nix, brother of Helen Nix, and uh, Zito, here is your F bomb. It's not the greatest, but if ah, you that's think it's the F bomb. There you go. Yep. Mm. Whoop. But if you've uh, if you think it's great, then that's fine with me. By the way, here's a Yit potion bottle. Uh, Nick, sorry I don't have a miniature for you, but here are some uh, mighty dice. Ah, they were for me. May they serve you well. Uh, you could build one of... Do, 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 do. There's a lot of letters there that go in a row that don't seem to form a word that I'm familiar with. Oh, no. <laughs> you could build one on... Oh, Hero Forge. Then share ah. with me. Okay, ah. there you go. Uh, 
And here are some uh, crochet catnip mice for your kitties. Nice. Well, thank you so much, I do believe. Uh, yep, this is from Hinata89811. Thank you so much, Hinata. We have, for me, I have the message from David saying, Grant, here is the miniature of your character. I hope it is to your liking. It is. I now remember you messaging me on Discord asking what colors I would be rocking, and I said, probably some cool blues, and uh, that's definitely what we got here. Uh, and then from Helen, we got Grant. Uh, I was making a, crocheting a top hat, and it's all, it is almost done, but it is missing one key element, the stiff top hat part. Yeah. Uh, so top hat coming soon. Thank right you very on. much, Helen. Looking forward to it. You've... You've messaged me about your progress on that project, and I'm really excited to get it. Mine says, Ben, here is a 1.0 version of your miniature. Version 2.0 will come soon, Oh, shit. To David. Oh. Yeah, wow. Yeah, I, I got to imagine it's kind of hard getting a merman out there. Yeah. It'd have to be like a Triton, I think. Uh, yeah, now that uh, Warhammer now has uh, little elf boys, but the thing is that they look like uh, Doug Jones in Pan's Labyrinth. Yeah, that works. <laughs> so yeah, you can but, get a wake face. You can get a wake uh, caricature, but just he'll have no face. <laughs> it's a little important. It's like my nightmare's coming true. <laughs> anyway. Also, so. also, does anybody else's uh, miniature smell like a head shop? It's very pleasant. Like, seriously, put that under your nose. I think that's because it was in that little uh, humidor there. That little coffin humidor. Could be. See, I was going to say, mine doesn't smell like anything. At least when he goes, he goes smelling lovely. <laughs> it, it, sm it smells like faintly of, like, cologne. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I have no idea. I don't know what one does to make a metal miniature absorb little, little, that much scent, but li little donkey man pheromones or pewter or whatever it is. But that is pleasant. Is, yeah, it's a pleasant smelling miniature. <laughs> Helps with the charisma bonus. It's, it's seriously relaxing. I'm yeah. going to be doing this all stream. And, al and also, I would like to oh. thank. I would like to personally thank. Uh, both of our lovely fans for Absolutely. keeping in touch with me about a lot of this stuff so mm -hmm. we can make this all special for everyone. So yeah, thank and, uh, you. For real, like the little thing under me says, thank you all so much for your support, guys. Yes, like, definitely. Everything that's been sent in, every bit drop, every prime sub, every regular sub, you're the guys that, uh, you're, you're the ones out there that make this operation run the most. You are the most important members of our team. Thank you so much for joining us. And now, we got an unconscious tiger in front of us. Wake it, didn't feel like killing today. He's not going to stop other people from doing it. <laughs> but damn it, he didn't want to kill today. <laughs> he didn't want to be responsible. Well, uh, now that you look ahead of you, uh, where the other cats seem to have run away, uh, you actually do notice that underneath that little archway is actually a dirt path that kind of leads to another small outcropping of a hill. So it looks like this was another pathway that led to like an incomplete mine shaft that they were trying to build but this was the big thing that was kind of destroying that this whole time. So you have succeeded in opening up the path to make sure nothing else kind of like happens for at least a good long while that they can get their tools over there. But as you've said, there is now an unconscious uh, dire cat with a couple of bones jutting out of its back sleeping in front of you. Yeah, I was gonna say that, 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 that being said, the number of predators in the area has not decreased. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Except for maybe that snake. Yeah, we chased one off and have one unconscious here. Uh... So we haven't exactly accomplished our goal, but Wake's just kind of standing over this unconscious tiger. Well, you needed a, you, a relief. Told you you just needed to bring back something that proved that you cleared the way a little bit. Uh, I mean, I I think as trophies go, a live tiger is above and beyond the call of duty. I mean, like, what what do you think the like? I, I don't like the idea of like you know giving a live creature as a gift or anything, but you think like. Ons you just watch as Angelo puts the end of his blunderbuss to the crown. We don't of the watch. Creature. We're talking over in the corner. <laughs> oh yeah, no. Oh you're Oh okay. Roll perception check then. Yeah. So I mean, like, I'm just gonna be like, so what are we gonna do with it? I don't know. I mean, maybe the like. Do you think the calls are nice to their animals? Do you think they'd like a tiger? Uh, I, I got a perce perception of twenty three. I have a feeling I'm gonna be catching whatever's coming down. I got a perception of nineteen. Y you know. Only when it would be funnier to fail, I got a yeah. net 20. What, what, what is this? Everybody's like... <laughs> Everyone's going to see it. Yeah, no, so you, so you guys all watch while you're saying that. You just, like, you slow, you slow down your speech enough to, like, just kind of grind it to an awkward silence that Onslow looks back at you while he has his blunderbuss, like, right on top of the thing's crown, ready to pull the trigger. What? Well, you now were... we have a different conversation going, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, son, if he's anything like my kind, he wants this dead. All right, uh, is that the, I mean, I guess destroying the brain is the most humane way of going about it, but, uh... 
I mean, I could just eat the heart. I mean, you could, but this seems like a... <laughs> fucking face! Seems like a quicker way <laughs> and just a very instant solution to our to our issue. And honestly, I don't have any issue with you killing it. Because <laughs> <laughs> if mean, it's in that I, one... I, I feel like if eating the heart is your way as a hunter, then you should do that either way. I just don't really... I've got things I'm working through. I just I just don't really want to be a part of it right now. Wake just kind of like, he understands, but he kind of steps away. Okay. That's fine, Wake. But by all means, don't stick around for anything you're not comfortable well, for. Well, hold on. I'm going to, what What was the number you rolled? I rolled a 12, and it was going to be basically, I, my. I just did a very quick, if it was less than 10, I would have a problem with it. If it was more, I was okay with it. Well, no, you still, like, had given me the yeah. number is still pretty good. So I'm going to roll, uh... I'm so I'm, I'm okay with it. I'm kind of antsy about it, but I'm just like, I'm not going to stop you. What was your original goal? Uh, basically, like I, like I said, I was just kind of more or less flipping a coin on if I was willing to let this go down or not. And okay, uh, I just looked at it as, okay, more than 10. He's, he is fine with it. I will not make him drag his feet and be like, no, you can't. This creature is alive. Well, <laughs> Ansel just looks at you, kind of like reading your message. She's like, you're seeing the inner conflict in you because he rolled a pretty good insight. Mm -hmm. Unless you wanted to like fight that. No, I'm, I'm, I'm willing for him to just go Okay, ahead. so he, he can read your face. Yeah. He just goes. It's basically a, I don't want to do it. Yeah, he looks, at his, he looks at his gun, <laughs> puts it to the side, whips out his machete. If we could just find the heart. We can make this clean. <laughs> Does this Nat have... 20 survival check. <laughs> it's right here under the third rib. <laughs> Nat 20. Bully. <laughs> Man, tune in next week for more adventures of the natural 20s. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. fucking real. Fucking Christ. Holy shit, what is that? Like the, the third, the third or fourth week? the night? Did you guys God. leave your dice out in the sun? They... Baked yeah. onto the clean. You we guys... already know this dice isn't fair. <laughs> yeah. You hear, you hear the cat just give off one small groan, and then it just slumbers off <gasps> into silence. Also right. picked it up by the tail. Wake gives like a pat, like <laughs> hoist it just... over his shoulder. Uh, there's probably an easier way. Like, I mean, you know, we could, you know, just kind of carve it and carry back other bits. I mean, it's probably easier, and they're fresher right now. Also, just looking down at you like, you dare desecrate a trophy? I, <laughs> I'm just saying, we got 20s on our survival check. That means we got a lot of shit. No, no, you don't get a lot of shit. You get the whole cat. Right. You have every right to we, this fucking we animal. We now it's use fine. every part of the dire tiger. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, no, you have the rights to this animal and any piece of it. All right. Wake still feels a little uncomfortable about the fact just that this- a big corpse. Yeah, carrying around a big corpse of a tiger, but- Well, you don't have to. Onslow's kind of- No, just no, like, I know Onslow's carrying slinging it. this thing over his shoulder. <laughs> I ho I ho <laughs> As anyway. more or less shrugs, just goes, hey, he's the hunter and lizard man of our group. If anyone's going to know how to present this thing in a way they'll like, he's a- uh, I'm going to trust his judgment. <laughs> yeah, Wake's going to try to like kind of forge ahead and see if he can find where they- like, Basically, try to see if there's like any other threats in the area. Try to find any mine, like where the mine should be. Okay. Well, you saw the pathway leading up to the mine. Like from where you were looking, there was like a lot of bits and pieces of like materials that looked like they were meant to carve or at least like to build. So, in front of you, like where the cats were sleeping, you could probably rummage through those crates and find stuff. But it's all construction working stuff, unless you feel it's Im imperative to check. Oh, Wake's just looking for that metal. Oh no, the metal's back at the Oh uh, okay, they had okay, they had it at the mine back there. Gotcha. Yes. The the whole purpose of this was so you could go into the mine and actually collect some for yourself. Yeah, we have we have cleared a path for them to use basically. To make to get to another ore, pretty much. So they had a finite resource of it. You're getting that last bit of resource. Alright, then what I'd like to do in the area is uh try to figure out a way to make it less hospitable for the I mean, you know, we've seen two of them, but yeah. we're to assume that maybe there are more out there to make it less likely that the tigers would return to this area. How would you do so? I don't know. Like, I'm trying to think if there's, like, because um, Wake's worked a lot with animal baiting in the past as kind of like a hunter, but mostly with undersea animals. Mm -hmm. uh, he knows that pheromones work really well for that, but he can't think for, like, is this tiger that we killed a male or a female? 
Rolling on that survival check. Let me roll up 1d4, see what well, happens. 20 on that survival check. I have a feeling you are well aware. Oh, no, you're well aware, but for my own sake, yeah. even I don't know. So <laughs> let me just roll for that. Female. And she was okay. about to have kittens, you say? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, she already had a litter of kittens, and they're hungry back in the... Back in the oh, so I was going to say, if it, if it was a male, we might be able to use its... Uh, I don't know, scent glance to kind of mark the territory as this is claimed, don't come here. Yeah. But as a female, the only glance you'd be getting are the things like, hey, hey, big boy tigers, come <laughs> get here. Yeah, but come get Come some. on over. Uh, I, I point over at the, you said there were like big stone arches that they were hanging out on, right? Yes, there used to be a civilization here before the miners showed up. That's what it looks like. But this thing's based, uh, if you want to roll a history check, you can to see if you can test. I more want to see like the, the structure of these arches. Would it be good to like, put, say, like, barbed wire or something around them to just discourage outside things trying to... Do like, you like, like little pigeon strips Basically. up top so nothing wants yeah, to so nest Yeah, so nothing wants there. to nest there. Hmm. Well, I don't see why you can't do that, but you'd have to spin me a tale of how that's going to work. Okay. I, th I think it's just best if we, like, time-saving-wise, it's probably best just to bring this back. We cleared out this yep. area of one You tiger. may want to animal-proof it. Yeah, there's one, there's one still in the area, but the threat is, is like significantly diminished. The other one is half burned alive and yeah. terrified. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Went on the worst drug trip of its life. <laughs> or was that the one we killed? I can't remember. No, you you didn't kill the one that was on the drug trip. The one that okay. was on the drug trip was set ablaze <laughs> and, and ran through the woods. Makes sense. <laughs> All right, so we'll just carry this guy back to camp. So what do you mean you can't find it? Follow the smoke. <laughs> <laughs> Follow the scent of burning hair. All right, so we'll just drag this guy back to the li uh, lizard folk uh, mining Alrighty. colony. So I'm going to need everyone to just quickly roll me a perception check. 15. 10. 12. Here's all those low rolls. Yeah. That's right, moderate. Let me, let me roll for Onslow. Okay. So Eloy, I mean, I'm sorry. Uh, Ezra and Onslow are pretty okay. Like, you guys pretty much are able to tell... Like where the path was that you guys went on, and mm. you also avoided the quicksand again, so you're able to pinpoint everything else out to everyone Good. else. Uh, Eloy and Wake are kind of in the back right now, not really like they're, you're, they're kind of like just a little bit too uh, far back enough that you can't really like catch what they're doing or what they're saying. Uh, Wake's just kind of subconsciously lost in thought, just staring at his feet. You just feel something tug at the back of your uh, fin. Slap at it. Stop it. You watch his wake almost turns around and slaps you in the face. Nope. Sorry, was I walking too close? I, I guess. Sorry, I was lost in thought. I thought you were, I don't know, something else. You get that same tugging sensation. What the fuck? I look at my fin. It's in the back of your neck. Oh, ba oh okay, my. <laughs> I look at hair. his fin. All right, roll a perception check. That'd be a 25. You watch as a tiny malnourished hand kind of like reached up into the leaves just before he swatted at the back of his neck. Stop it. There's, there's something in the trees. I'm thinking monkeys. I'll look. Uh, what am I rolling? Investigation or perception? Uh, well, what exactly are you looking into the trees? Are you trying to move stuff? Like what? I'm, I'm, look, I'm, I'm peering into the trees to try to see what he's talking about. That would be a investigation. Okay, uh, if that's the case, then that is a 15. 15? There is a giant, like, there are, like, giant bowling ball-sized orbs looking down at you from the tree. And it's a little, and a little curled hand just kind of, like, goes out, like... Is it a slow loris? <laughs> um. Eloy, you can see this thing he's looking at. There are multiple more of these looking down at you from this tree. All right, I'm going to take, like, a handful of, like, Wake doesn't really eat fruit rations. Um, is there are there any like fruits nearby or anything like that? Like on the ground, just that would be a survival little... check. Okay, I'm good at those. I mean, I'd uh, have some dried fruit in my pack. Twenty one. Twenty one. Not around from where you're standing, but you look on the floor. Nuts, there, berries, anything. There, there's like remains of little turds and a little bit of seeds like all around the floor. I'll gather a couple of the seeds and I'll just be like, I'm, I'm gonna try like a handle animal. Hey, yeah, how, how you doing? Uh, handle animal of a modified 20. 
how you watch the little creature kind of just like reach out its little hand and just go. Okay. Yeah, there you go. It takes it. It's okay. But now all the other eyes are like zo- like from you don't see their bodies. You just see the eyes kind of like through like the little bits of leaves that are in the tree, and they're all converging now that they've seen you feed one. No, oh, I made friends. A little perception check. Uh, that's better. That is a uh, 17. You lost count at 50. I don't know if there's enough seeds. What do I have? Do I have anything? There are now, now, now you watch as like, like out of some horror anime, tiny little hands start like coming out of the, out of the trees, reaching out. Uh, all shaking boy. and like, right in front of your face, like give. Mm. Uh, <laughs> you, you got any? Uh, got any fruit? <laughs> I so I've got eight days of rations in my pack. Presumably, at least some of that would be dried fruit. So I I rummage around see if I have anything I think they might like. Yeah, as a carnivore, most of Wake's rations would be like dried fish and stuff. Uh, let me roll something for them real quick. Jerky. Meanwhile, I'm just up front with Onslow having a very enriching conversation. <laughs> so good, I can't notice these 50 bowling ball creatures. <laughs> no, you guys are well ahead. <laughs> Dragging a tiger carcass with you. Mm-hmm. He's like, so how much does that weigh anyway? <laughs> uh, all right, so I just rolled for them. They're eyeing your food mostly, yes. Like, when you offer your rations wake, they kind of just, like, don't. Yeah, I, I figured these things weren't carnivores, or we would have been in more danger. I figure I can restock it at town easily enough. I'll take any any fruits and just kind of toss them on the ground in a pile. Like, here you go, have fun. All right, I need you to roll me a. I need you to roll me a uh, perception check. Mike's gonna continue with a handle animal, just okay. ushering these things. Twenty six. Wake's Can I see your character sheet for a second? Sure. <laughs> rip, rip, rip. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no! Uh, Wake's handle animal is a 24 this time. They're, like, grabbing at your fingers, like, this food? No. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> I maybe, have an idea of where this is going. I think this may be the first time my DM's ever asked to see my character sheet during a session. I mean, <laughs> nothing wrong with it. It's all open information. Yeah. Just a novel experience for me. <laughs> mm-hmm. Here you are. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you turn around to uh, give the little creatures some of your rations. They take it with no problem. They some like they try to rend at it because you you kind of just like handed it off to them, like thinking, "Oh, here you go." They take it with no problem. All right, Good. All right, have enjoy. All right, bye. I'm I'm gonna go try and catch up with Onslow and and Ezra. He watches the hands kind of like in sway, reach out towards you as if they're waiting for more, but you guys just keep walking away. Sorry, yeah. that's all I got. Yeah, my final hand on Milano was a 26, so I just like... <laughs> so, right, may, bye, may, bye, maybe baby. pet one. Bye. I don't know. You got to t- pet one? I don't know. I got a handle animal of a 26. You tell me what I was <laughs> able to do with that. <laughs> <laughs> you felt your hand gain much more weight when you reached into the trees to do that. Oh, boy, it's dense up there. You pull it back. There's a tiny little, like, big-headed eye-eye kind of, like, looking back at you, like, curled around your wrist. Oh, cute pet pet. Its snout is kind of elongated enough that when you look down, its mouth isn't like stretched across from cheek to cheek. It's from the beginning of its snout to the bottom of its chin. Ugh. Okay, so it's anteater like, aardvark like, but tiny and bush baby. Oh, lamprey. You watch as it opens its mouth. It doesn't have fangs, but it does have bucked teeth ringed around it. And its little tongue just like goes out like Yeah. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna continue feeding this one like little nuts and seeds that I picked up and just like keep walking. 
you are worth figuring out. <laughs> I mean, if it's chilling with me, it's chilling with me. If it decides to leave, I'm not going to try to kidnap it. Yeah. So you you try to keep feeding it. It continuously keeps, like, it continuously, like, takes what you give it. Yeah. Uh, roll a percept. Never mind. I rolled a nat 20. All right. <laughs> what if I match it? I didn't. <laughs> Can I see your character sheet? Yes. Uh, do you just want my items? Yes. Like, okay. Uh, everything up top is what I have on my person. Everything mm. under chest is what I keep on the ship. See, that's what I, where I thought this was going. Mm. I was like, is he just going to start being like, and, uh, oh, by the way, this ring you have, you don't have it anymore. <laughs> the only thing that I think would be inaccessible to something is... Uh, the manacles are in a secured pouch, like kind of a hidden pouch. Right. Don't worry. You'll be fine. I'm sure. You'll be fine. It's fine. Yeah. For that matter, I'll, I'll state now for the record, I always leave my travel turner on the Yeldon in my room. That, that thing's too valuable to take. Okay. Here you are. <sighs> All right, so you uh, you feed the little uh, you feed the little creature there some more go, nuts. Yeah. It uh, it kind of just like looks back to the rest of the other creatures, kind of like reaching out. They slowly start to reel their hands back, and the creature jumps off your hand. Little sugar glider, kind of like wings expand, and it goes onto the tree and climbs up. That's adorable. Well, well, do yeah. do 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 do. You both catch up to Onslow and uh, and. Uh, and Ezra, the problem is now you feel a little bit lighter. Hmm. Things feel shifted in your inventory, like even more so than usual. Like I noticed a little bit of jingling back there where it didn't used to jingle? Yep. Huh. Hey guys, hold up for a sec. I'm gonna paw through my stuff real quick. Your healing potions are gone. Uh, all the healing potions, or specifically the things labeled healing potions? Because uh, I because I have like different categories of healing potion in here. The normal stand the stand bog standard healing potions are all gone. Okay. Shit. What? Uh, I think those. Uh, well, we found these little. Uh, I don't know how do I describe them. They're like sloth lampreys that are just kind of <laughs> living in the trees. <laughs> uh, I think they're having a party with my healing potions. Hmm. How many did they get? Two. You want two of mine? Nah, I, I, I should be okay. You reach your hand into your pack, they're gone. Hmm. Never mind. <laughs> you think they're addicted? Maybe. Huh. Well, this sounds like something we need to science. Ezra places one healing potion on the path behind him and just kind of back, leaves a safe distance. You're going to stealth? Yes. All right. That's actually a good idea. Roll stealth, everyone. Mm, not the greatest. Uh, 14. Same. Actually, no. Uh, mine's a 16. 24. Ooh. Yeah. Eagle is finally getting that stealth figured out. Everyone kind of just like backs up for like a little bit. Five minutes go by. You watch as one, like you see one of those creatures kind of just like fly onto the road, kind of like glide in, claw on up to the potion, like scratch at the cork where the, uh, where the top of the bottle is, and then just like hoist it up and start drinking. All right. Well, these things like sure do potions. like healing magic. Looks like healing potions are definitely what these things are at least. <laughs> they're at least very interested in those in particular. Huh. Well, I guess. Uh, I guess while we're walking through here, just keep a close eye on your potions. Make sure nothing's grabbing at them as we walk. Oh, nothing to worry. I don't think I got any more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could. Mr. Onslow, do you have any healing potions on you? Kind of like rummages through his sack. He pulls out, uh, he pulls out a greater healing potion, just the one he has. Mr. Ezra, how much you got on you? I have two healing potions left. Okay. Well, just for safety's sake, I mean, they got everything that Wake and I got. I can, I can make you and Mr. Onslow invisible so they can't come after you none until we get back to town. Unless mm -hmm. they can smell it. Yeah, there's that. I mean, they were able to... I don't know, who knows? Either way. Don't worry about me. As a master thief, I know what to look uh, for. It doesn't stop stolen. at the drink. 
Oh, it's still drink. It's eating the glass eating too. The flask. <laughs> oh, they're disposals. Well, that's mm. horrifying. It's fascinating that it has doesn't to... gain weight. <laughs> By comparison, the glass should be bigger than the actual creature itself. It's like they got little void stomachs. Hmm. I <laughs> I stare at the creature and then just kind of go. I don't know if we really have the means to see exactly how useful a creature like that would be, but that is You watch its curious. stomach puff up, like it's kind of like puffing out its chest, and then it vomits the se- it vomits seeds and the potion along with it into the earth. Is it just well, now I'm confused. That just, just seems wasteful. Th- Hold on a second. <laughs> Let's see if I have... And you guys watch as bits of tall grass and other flora start coming up where it vomited. Okay, so these things make forest. They're like super fertilizers. I wonder if, if a farmer could use that. I mean, for real, like, these things seem very useful. As the uh, as the seeds grow, you watch as, like, a little bit of, like, a blackberry bush kind of, like, stop midway. And then as five more of them just come in and just start gnawing on the berries. I mean, look how quick that grew. And then they, but they eat what they make. I wonder... How does that work? This is the most efficient species I think I've ever seen. <laughs> and there's Onslow. Hold on, Onslow. Put your gun down. Just a sec. <laughs> I have an idea. Just want to make sure if I still Son, have... you know who I am and what I'm about. <laughs> <laughs> Don't think I have it anymore. Must have thrown it away at some point. I know at some point I had a thing of black ichor, and I was going to be like, what happens if they eat something gross? <laughs> huh. You well, guys are still stealth right now. You're still observing. You pretty much watched all that just transpire in front of you. I mean, it's very impressive. I don't know what to do with it, but it's impressive. It's strange, yeah. may just have to keep a mental note of these, these creatures. Maybe... I sort of wonder those berries that it made, like, does that still have healing juice up in it? Did it change what it does? Or did, like, the healing juice just make it grow quicker? Uh, can like, I look at the, like, the berries real quick? Like, just get a good look at them? Sure. So it's just a perception. Roll me a perception check. Uh, 23. Uh, they look like standard blackberries, except they have this weird little, like, shimmer to them. Like, sunlight kind of has, like, this weird, like, odd extra bit of, like, glass around the berries themselves. Okay. I'm gonna do a quick dex check, just kind of, like, pull out some of my, uh, cryptographers, or, uh... Cartographers? Yeah, cartographers gear, just kind of sketch one of these creatures. Sure. Uh, Roll me an int. Oh, int. Wow. Uh, that'd be, like, that'd be a history check, just to get a one-to-one comparison of the creature. Uh, I'm, a, yeah, just drawing this thing. Uh, it's 18. 18? Would have been a 22. You <laughs> sketch... A fairly decent version. One of them is a is sits around enough that you're able to at least get the basic body figure. You're not getting details, but you got the shape of the creature. And I remember what its mouth looked like, so I'm just kind of like sketching like what I remember and stuff. Yeah, like right mouth? Question mark. Yeah. Uh. Anyway, now that I got that out of the way, if anybody else like wants to do something from here, Wake's just gonna go out and collect a berry. Yeah. I was. You're gonna actually get out of cover. Yeah. I yeah, assume these things are relatively timid. They super are, because the moment you stand up... I mean, unless, like I said, unless somebody else wanted to do something first, I, I don't oh. want to... Uh, no, that, nah. that, was, that seemed like the next logical step to me. Okay, yeah. Wake's going to go collect a berry or two. Yeah, you stand, stand up. <sighs> yep, you stand up, the creatures all run away. Bye. Do, do, the berries do. begin to shrivel. Oh. Hmm. Well, I'm going to collect them anyway. You go to reach for it? Yeah. So you kind of put them in like a... You feel something slap at your finger. Ow. Who told you you could take that? They were still working on it. I mean, I, 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 I nope, nobody, uh, who, who am I speaking to? There's a little ball of light looking up at you from the floor. Well, hi there. Uh, I'm Wake, and I'm just really confused about what I just saw. <sighs> you don't look like someone who's from around here, so I guess that makes sense. I'm from the ocean. Do I look like someone who's from around here? You, you're looking at the little ball of light now. <laughs> Everyone's kind of just like sitting there. Ezra there's a, there's a little ball. Cover. What? Oh, Ezra you're... remains in cover. Yep. There's a little ball of light with like just wings flapping behind it. 
so. it's it's blurring around too fast. You can't get a good picture, a good image of it. You just get a ball of light. So, um, who uh, who who do I have the uh, honor of addressing here? My name is Blick. Hi, Blick. I'm Wake. Okay, Wake. Well, do you mind going away so we can let those things get back to what it was doing? That's I need to collect food for the rest of my home, you know. I, I just kind of assumed you. Do you know what those? Th I mean, could I have one? A berry, maybe. You don't want these. They're ruined now. They weren't done. They have. Those creatures have some kind of magic that helps things grow even faster, and it only works if they keep concentrating on it. Oh. Um, now that they're ruined, can I have one anyway, though? I mean, you're not, like, you don't want it, right? <sighs> sure, go ahead. All right, I take, uh, I take, like, just a couple of them and put it in the, uh, the empty jar that I now have that used to contain the uh, hit blood. You now have, uh, you now have, uh, Unfertilized berries. Unfertilized berries. Mm. All right, sorry to <clears throat> disrupt everything. It was just real fascinating. I'd never seen anything like that before. I'll uh, let you get back to it, I guess. Sorry. I would suggest that you don't try to interact with the nature around here too much. It's very unpredictable. You're very close to a ley line of the Feywilds around here. I kind of like let my eye drift back. There's like a bit of tiger sticking out from the bush. I shove it under with my foot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll try to keep that into account. <laughs> Onslow never said he got up out of the grass anyway. <laughs> yeah. Well, the the creature now that you watch as the little ball of light kind of like sits down on the floor. There's like a small like negative space silhouette of a person inside that still in that color just like standing there you're kind of thinking like if you balled your fist it's about that big uh that's how tall the creature is it's uh wings kind of like almost look like dragonfly-esque as it's as the silhouette now kind of like is looking over the damage and trying to assess it it has like a little tiny makeshift spear with a small rock at the end of it trying to like poke at stuff and try to figure out now that all of this broken stuff is, is he's trying to like assess the damage. All right, Wake's gonna do a quick knowledge. <laughs> you don't know anything, do you? Natural wonders. The Fae don't so exist. So are so are you like a you're like a really weird bug? I've never seen your type before. Like what what are you? Like you, you like a, how do you not really? You don't. Oh well, that makes sense. You're a fish. He would know. Would I? Advantage. Advantage? What was it? History. Uh, history? Just intelligence or, yeah. Yay, advantage. Uh, 14. It's a pixie. Oh, yeah, you're... Is it a pixie? Is that right? Did I get that right? It seems only fitting that the centaur knew that. I mean, you are part fey, after all. People keep telling me that. I mean, so is my people. I just, I, I don't know. I mean, you're like... Hey, question. Do you hatch from an egg? <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't hatch from an egg. I don't know. I came forth from the ether. I was born of magic. I came from an egg. Does your sweat <laughs> get people high too? You, what? Just curious. We got this this fairy dragon. You have a what? Yeah, he's a good boy. Wake sleight of handing to see if he can get like any of his dust. <laughs> <laughs> I got a sleight of hand of uh, uh, 17. You can fly, you can fly. Ow! He like, takes his little, stat, his little stick. No touching. Ow! Fine, sorry. Just wondering what all that sparkle stuff is around you. You're getting a small concentrated version of what you feel from this. Not enough, but like you can feel the effects. I'm so absorbing. Okay, cool. So that's a yes. Well... If you're ingesting, like, the remnants of actual fey, of course that's going to happen. Creatures of the material realm can't actually handle that. That would kill them in concentrated form. Eloy, I can feel the air. That's, okay, that's not good. No, um, it moves from you and me, and it flows to everything, man. Well, no, that's good. I mean, that's, that's just fun. I've yeah. done that. But the killing part, no, that's not good. Well... Not exactly killing, but that would that's basically how you would summon a court of Fey right into your doorstep. Do they 
all right, we don't really have courts where I'm from, but I've, I've heard of them. They're either they pass judgment or it's a place where you play ball sports. Which, it, which kind of court quick, is this? It's like a clear rock. Quick fluff. Uh, Ezra is just in the bush, not wanting to reveal himself, but being so furious that he's like, he has these questions, but he's got, <laughs> he has Eloy and Wake, who is high off his ass. And he's just like, no, you could be asking so. Ah! <laughs> he's, like, he's like, no, I'm not getting up. I'm not going to, I'm not going to reveal where I am part way into this conversation. But yeah, courts are like a clear rock. So like a magic rock? Yeah. Like everything, man. <laughs> There's blicks. Like you're just looking at the silhouette, just go. It does the clone high hands, like what the fuck. Huh. So. Hmm. So yeah, my the the crew of the ship we was on was trying to to condense or or refine the the dragon sweat because it seems like a whole heap of fun. But you're telling me there might be some. Some bad attached to it. Is there like a safe dosage? Does it have any like? Because it taught me all kinds of new spells. No, I don't think that. I don't know. I'm not part. Like all I know is is that I'm one with the Fey. I I'm one with. I'm one with that magic. We're all one with magic, man. Hmm. Right. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so the. the fu- the point being is that you're all of the material realm. Your your bodies can't physically handle it. That's why you have wizards that take magic and just turn it into this version that can actually work inside the the ley lines of the material realm. Huh. Okay. Yeah, we got a we got one of those, a you, wizard lady. Well, She's, I mean, I could sense it in you. Yeah, I got I do musics. That's still that's refining something from the fey world. You're refining arcane magic and making it into a malleable form that works within the context of this reality. That's a lot of words. Yeah, I'm a little confused too, but I don't know. I'm self-taught. I don't have a whole lot of theory. Well, look, the point is is that you have a fey dragon, and I assume you have dragons in this world, right? Yeah, we met one. He he was not a good boy. And then there's the other one, but that he was a good boy. Oh but yeah, he's like yeah, a real. No, he's he's real a big good. boy though. Yeah. Well, I okay. Well, since you know what dragons clearly are, you also realize that they're something that shouldn't be trifled with. They are powerful beings. They are the closest thing to a demigod that isn't an acolyte of this world. Eloy. Yeah. We should go fishing. Okay. Let's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> In a second though. In a second though, I think we're onto something here. <laughs> Well, ours ours is just a small boy. Does that make a difference? They can change size. Oh yeah, I suppose I suppose Mr. Gore can do that. He's real friendly though. I mean, they're both real friendly. You are you are you have a creature that essentially can go toe to toe with anyone from the realm of Full Gorbenth on your ship. Wait, remind me, Full Gorbenth. I'm History not... check, religion check. Actually, <laughs> sorry. It's that really cool Killer Instinct character. <laughs> uh, religion, you said? Yep. 18 for Wake. I'll, I'll go with disadvantage. I'm high off my ass. Yeah. <laughs> 15. 10. Still Four. better than me. 14. You, re- you remember from uh, back in Jahal Cove, Father Dorn said that that is known as the Mass of Insanity. That is the creature that Mr. Rattles' Realm of Magic comes from. Oh, hey, we met that guy, I think. I don't know. Lots of eyes, though. Yeah, that was real spooky. I mean, if anything, having somebody around who can handle that, who seems real friendly, just makes me feel better. It's probably for the best, I mean. I mean, not like we're going to go out looking for horrible masses of eyes, but if we do, I'd rather have it with us there than not. Oh, we're talking about it. Okay. Well, oh boy, if we could have Lieutenant Gore, I mean... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the, the no, I the thought we were like, talking hey, about Pliskin for a second. Whatever, it's all your funeral. I would advise you get rid of that thing or find someone who can handle it. You're a really tiny man. You said someone who can handle it. I mean... We just... <laughs> if, if Blick had a face right now, it's just it's just a silhouette. I mean, all it seems to want is honey, so we we just give it honey, and it seems happy. You're just feeding it that... Again, it's a creature made of entirely made... It's a creature of fey magic. It's a it's a creature of fey magic with powers beyond comprehension. And it likes honey. 
Yeah, because it's condensing all that you're giving it into fey magic. I'm, I'm still, I'm really failing to see this downside that you seem to think is here. We're making, if it's as powerful as you say, and it's our friend because it lacks us because we feed it. There are no friends when it comes to it. Well, not with that attitude. You know how many, you know how many of my friends it's killed with a rock slide? <laughs> Zero. That makes it way better than the last big powerful thing I lived with. <laughs> it's like that Blick had this busy work day ahead of him and he finds these two and it's just like hold on I can't it's dangerous to let you exist in the way you are I have to educate you Eloy is very comfortable with living in close quarters with something that could kill him at any time that's how he's lived his whole life this is not a new thing <laughs> this one just doesn't seem actively mad at me and yeah. that's a huge improvement <laughs> I mean, if there's some way of living without the constant threat of death, then great. But as far as Eloy knows... <laughs> that concept has never darkened the door of his mind. And you, Wake's barely processing any of it. You, you fail to see the danger in all of this, don't you? I mean, I fail to see more danger than any other day. The world's just great, man. Yeah, yeah. until you die and then it's over. Yeah. 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 That's why we got to enjoy it. <laughs> you know what? He, he, I rolled so low for him. You know what? <laughs> Have fun eating your condensed fey magic. See what happens when the faceless one appears before you. Have a nice day. And he flies off. Bye, tiny man. Hmm. Maybe I won't take any more hit. <laughs> that was seems it? like the safest option. How much of that was real? Hmm. We should probably keep moving. Yeah. Tiny man was real. He was he was nice enough. Oh, that's so cool. He seemed real worried. Just just real anxious. That's no way to leave Ezra, your life. My finger <laughs> hurts. Kind of pokes my head out. <laughs> yeah. It's like the coast seems clear. <laughs> okay. Well, it's good to know that the debate team was there to ask all the important <laughs> questions. <laughs> <laughs> Ezra. <laughs> have yes. you ever been fishing? Yes, I mean, like, really fishing. I mean, I've hung out on a boat in the ocean with a big net. Yes. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Tell you what, wait, let's get this tiger back to the village, and then, I mean, coast is right near there. We can go fishing right away once we get that out of the way. Oh, great. Yeah, let's, let's go, kitty. We probably ought to get rid of that big statue stone monument thing that's blocking us from getting out into the open waters. So. All right. That's true. Once we're out there, we can fish every day. Oh man. Okay. <laughs> kind of what we do on the ship figure, all the time. <laughs> figuring this out. Okay. Let's let's let's. So you take let's you, go. you guys head back. Yeah. yeah. All righty. The only notes Ezra took from that is like, uh, it might be incredibly powerful, uh, but it seems to be okay so long as we give it honey. Consuming large amounts of hit might be a bad idea, but nothing says that if we spread that across, say, a population of a city, <laughs> you know, we won't be the target. Oh, you know, just, to, just let's just bring forth and uh, let's just usher in a realm of courts of fey into Blick existence. Blick seems very nervous when we mentioned consuming it more so than creating it. So if we make it and unleash it to the masses, that's that's entirely different. I'm just saying, what better way to attack an apocalyptic force than with another apocalyptic force. Hey, you know what? <laughs> Let's just say if we find out that there's some weird cultish behaviors in a city, we might just find a new epidemic to throw at it and see how those things interact. <laughs> Let them fight. On Rush 2, Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> yeah. Oh, jeez. It seems there's a dark demon being un in the underbelly of the city. Too bad they're also addicted to fey magic. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> I mean, we could just, like... Like inscribe a, a Corrigan's warning on the side yeah, of every exactly. bottle. If every bottle just has a little like, hey, you know, the uh, process. Not consume if pregnant. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, your baby might, your baby might nope. come out. Your baby might come out like more than a quarter elf. Manufacturers note: Fey magic is highly unstable. May have unpredictable side effects. <laughs> Why is my son a pig? May have unpredictable <laughs> side effects. This is for thrill seekers only. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, if you don't have the balls, then fine. Yeah. <laughs> Highly advised those with children do not take, or with anyone relying on them. Okay. Or anybody who is, in fact, themselves just a tiny little man baby who can't handle it. <laughs> <laughs> not recommended for those responsible or cowards. Not recommended for those who aren't cool. 
But anyway, yes, we uh, return. We can continue. We continue down the path <laughs> as Ezra's just, you know, hey, you know what? Don't get high on your own supply is underlined now in our. <laughs> And as they as they get back to the uh, camp, Wake is coming yeah, you're, down. Yeah, you're, so, you're yeah. sobering down from it. <laughs> oh, I got the headache though. I still got the headache. Oh, it's always there. You return to relieve. There's uh, ev- all the uh, Komodo dragon lizard boys, kind of just like all watching you come in with this giant like creature slung over Onslow's shoulder. Oh God, I forgot how big these guys are. <laughs> they are kind of taller than you. Like the shortest one is probably the size of you. Yeah, Wake's not Wake's not a, like a tall person by. Human but you're standards. taller than like apart from Onslow, you're the tallest out of everyone else. Hmm. In in our trio, I think I think you and I are probably close in height. Yeah, right? how how tall is Ezra? I have always just made him just be basically a, a short ish human. Like, so like five seven, yeah, five yeah, eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah five, that's eight. about right. So, uh, you get up to relieve. Uh, relieve, relieve is presented with the tiger. Relieve looks ecstatic. He's just like. You kill? You... Whole thing. Keep whole thing. You kill. Eloy points to Onslow. He kill. He help. Yeah, me knock out. Yeah, it was uh, real good. It it dead. Uh, other scared. Still one. Don't patronize me trying. <laughs> me, <laughs> sorry, me coming down. Me hung over. We met a tiny little glowy man. Faye in this area too? Oh yeah, a lot of them apparently, or somewhere I don't know. Said some something about being around a fold of a Feywild. Yeah, so he said a ley line. Seemed real important. Probably should have asked more about it, but I didn't. Yeah, <laughs> you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> that not too uncommon. Fey around here, they come in various shape, size. They, they just. Warp, they they warp in. They not harm anyone, but they do leave lasting effects in some areas. Our food supply, rather, he's like trying to fish the word out, and Anzo repeats it to him in Draconic. Low? <laughs> well, there was a little, there were also a bunch of little monkey boys. I, sh- I show off like a little picture of them. Yeah, these things. I don't know. They seem to be, they seem to work together. Yeah, we they took all our healing potions, you know, drink and feel better. <laughs> and and that, they made that make that makes sense. They stole all our water too. Yeah, but then then they they magicked up some some bushes full of fruit. So, I mean, maybe it could be a good thing. But you got to leave them alone. That's what the little man said. You got to leave them alone while they do it cuz if you interrupt them halfway, you it's just, you just see one one of the Komodo dragon lizard boys. He's got like a whole like bandolier of them dead on his chest. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> kind of slides away. Backs, backs off. Yeah. <laughs> kind of like shrinks into his tent. <laughs> so, oops. He's like he has half one half eaten in his mouth. Like. Yeah, it seems they're a big part of the ecosystem around here. So I guess you know maybe leave those alone if you see them doing something. I mean, if you like fruit, I don't know. Do you like fruit? Every single one of them, just every every lizard folk in here look at you. They all start laughing. Good point. Tell you what, though. You probably like to eat things that do <coughs> like fruit. So maybe leave those boys alone and let whatever eats fruit eat the fruit and then eat the thing that eats the fruit. It's a whole circle of life scenario. We keep that in mind. But that does leave us to understand that the Fae now are the reason why our supplies are dwindling. Well, if you, like I said, offered earlier, if you need a ride over to right. right. We, we do need to set up a new mine, this one very low on supply. That was the reason why we asked you to go out, to take care, or at least fix up the the mining uh, the mining deposit that we weren't able to finish. Well, yeah, I mean, we, we took care of the tiger anyway, which is good. Now we can send most of our men out to go fix that. As he says that, he like looks to his his other companions and like waves them, and you see a bunch of boys just like start packing up their tents, pick up some dynamite and some other <clears throat> materials, and just like all start walking in the direction you came from. At some point, you may want to consider setting up some sort of fence perimeter around the area because there are there are still creatures living there. Like li- living 
in the surrounding areas that may try to move in. So, you know, just with low su- be, with be low, cautious. With low supply around this area, it was very difficult to do that. But now that we've moved closer inland, perhaps that could be a little bit more arranged. Speaking of supplies, I do believe our uh, exchange was for, I don't know, a couple chunks of metal. Of course. He, like, steps to the side and, like, ushers you to go inside. All right, I go in. Again, this deep, this cave, very little remains, but what there is, you are welcome to take. Wake shrugs and just goes in and starts looking for the stuff that he needs. Does he know not... He, like, holds up a pickaxe. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's just scouting it out. He's looking for it to, to know where to bring pickaxe. He, like, hands it to you. Yeah, uh, Like, thanks. shoves it in your chest. <laughs> Onslow, you, you guys actually watch now as Onslow and Relieve are now speaking to each other in Draconic, and they're making, like, knifing gestures to the, to the, cre- to the, uh, to the dire cat right in front of you. Onslow's starting to pick it up enough that he looks like he's engaged in like serious, serious conversation. Like they're he's they're t- swapping tips. They're explaining like how this works. He did. And expl- then, he did explain at the beginning of this that we could like get some gear made out of whatever we brought back. So, and you're actually watching as Onslow is like patting down like on his body, like like he's like making like little swatches of like where a vest would go, and relieve is just like and like showing him like where the prime cuts are to get that. I was just, like I'm just imagining like pulling out like a small tape measure, mm, pulls out like pins, start putting. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so while that's going on, you guys are welcome to go inside the cave. Uh, if you are gonna grab some materials to do some mining, I'm going to ask you guys to go ahead and roll me a. Do, 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 do. What's a good thing? Actually, you know what? No, I'm not gonna recommend. I want to see what you guys want to do as you enter the cave. Uh, it looks like it's. It looks like it's like a little bit of like a drip feeding water coming through the ceiling, like almost the moisture from outside kind of evaporates and it makes it go to the ceiling. So there's like a little bit of like damp, wa- damp little driplets of water going in through the stalagmites and stalactites. Uh, there is a small path that leads down even further into the ground, probably like another 15 feet. Uh, and there's a big like enclosed circle where it looks like they mined here. Like this used to be a very big vein, but now it's been depleted. And it's just a little ring of water where there's little like bits of stone. But uh, you remember, Wake, that the material that is made out of your spear and what most of your kind have used is like the only way to possibly forge this is with thermal vents in the water. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's unrefined state. It looks almost like an aquamarine, but it has like this smoky little red vein that also like it literally looks like blood uh, a little neural network of a bloodstream going through some aquamarine. All right. Well, first and foremost, Wake's going to strike up a torch just so they can get some proper light down there. All righty. You set uh, up a torch. Uh, yeah, it'll uh, also let us know if we get to a spot that has no oxygen. Oh no, you're like I'm sure, but mining. Right on. Uh, you you should be fine in that regard. Like you've only like went down a few feet, and there's like a giant like little carved out cave area where you could feel the air still breathing through. Okay. All right. Uh, you said you have the uh, pickaxe, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Wake, wake's <laughs> wake's still kind of coming down, but he knows his hands are magic weapons. So if anything, his hands are actually going to be more durable than the pickaxe. All things considered. I mean, you can grab some materials too. Actually, if it's all the same to you guys, can I just observe Onslow? Everybody had to hunt back home, but he's way better at it than I am. Mm. I'd, I'd like to, to learn what I can. That's fine with me. Go I mean, I know what we're looking for. All right. Well, I'm going to hold you back for a quick second. You two are in the cave right now. Mm-hmm. So you're watching as Wake is going around uh, trying to find... You don't know what he's looking for. He never really explained what the cr- what yeah, the Yeah, I'm I'm basically like. just along with the pickaxe like, "Hey, once you tell me a good wall to point at, I'll I'll just start hitting it and see if I can figure this out." All it's right. never much of a miner, but So, if you were to roll a one, perception check, oh. One thing I was actually going to do in terms of uh, locating this stuff is uh, I normally use this just for like, you know, fi- like, you know, striking up a candle or something like this, but my elemental attunement does give me the ability to interact with like nature in certain ways. I was wondering if I could use that to like, you know, press my hand up against the wall, see if I can like feel the density of different materials and stuff, or at least give give me some form of advantage or proficiency in some sort of search for I such a thing. I will ask you to roll a uh, if you stand in one location, 
It'll yeah, take... basically just feeling the vibrations of the wall. That will be an arcane check with advantage. Okay. I'll take that. Well, I don't need to roll much more than that. That's a nat 20. Hey. This place is almost depleted. Like, around the walls, it's, like, almost impossible to find anything. Uh, you do see that, like, from, like, a little bit of a mind's eye and from patting your hand down on the wall, you actually catch, like, one of the small little red veins in, like, your mind's eye going towards the center. And in the middle where, like, the rock looks like there used to be here and it's depleted, it looks like there's, like, probably just... Probably about like the size of your torso is a little bit underneath the floor. You don't know how far down, but you watch as that small little red vein starts to turn into a clot. Yeah, so basically I just kind of feel it and it's this like echolocation pulse of do 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 big piece. Do, 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 do. <laughs> yep, you are now standing in the middle where it looks like there's it looks like it's chipped away block that they just stopped working on because they didn't find any more. Alright. This is it. <clears throat> okay. Thinks uh. it'll be what we need. Here, here, uh, here goes nothing. Athletic <laughs> just, check. Just, just swing the, the pickaxe. Yeah, Wake's With a up. nat one! <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Meanwhile, Wake is just going to, like, kind of put his hands into, like, kind of like a, a crane sort of motion and just start trying to attack the well, before we stone that, around it. Before, yeah, no, I'm, I'll wait for this. <laughs> give me some severity on I this. Need, uh, I need you to give him some severity. I swear to God, if the pickaxe head breaks off and smacks me in the face. <laughs> you hadn't said anything. Maybe. I know. <laughs> All right, 77. That's pretty low severity. Okay. Um, you know, I just... Here I go! Huh? Right in this... It's stuck in the ceiling. You pull down, and now the metal piece is gone, and you only have the stick. Uh, okay. All right. Uh, I have a feeling this isn't what... This isn't normally how the process goes. Not much for physical labor, eh, Cap? Uh, well, you know, I, I did a lot of fishing and stuff. Never really went oh, underground. Fishing's great. Yeah. <laughs> More talk you know to people Hold into doing the mining for This me. isn't that one. I'm going to roll something else real quick. Oh, that's very high. Mm-hmm. So I've got this. So not only do we have a broken pickaxe. Metal part of pickaxe. the pickaxe part in the, in the roof or ceiling. You pull it out. You, you pull out the stick. You look at it. Well, I ain't much for physical... The point of the pickaxe falls into your shoulder. Ew. Okay, that stinks. That thing is sharp. For two points of damage. Whew. Well, it's supposed to dig into water or dig into stone. <laughs> Ow. Mm. Well, right, okay. Wake, Wake is just going to attempt to break the rocks around this metal. All right. Because he knows the resonance of his punches isn't going to break the metal. Since you know where to look, I'm going to take away the disadvantage, but I, I will allow this to be just a straight athletics check. All right. Whapuja. Uh, that is a... Oh, modified 20. Okay. The rock is soft. Like, you're able... Like, just a basic punch alone from your hand is able to, like, just break away pieces and pieces. Ezra, you watch as, like, the earth that like, he's striking almost starts to have, like, this weird little glow, almost like it looks like the vein of a person's hand. Oh. I, well, I... He just kind of drops the pickaxe. I, I guess that works, too. Yeah, breaking rock is easy enough, and this metal shouldn't be destroyed by my punches. It takes thermal vents to get it out, so if I can just break loose a large chunk or get rid of all this <laughs> rock around it, we should just be able to move with it. Uh, roll me another athletics check. Uh, 21 that time. Okay. Uh, you get all of the basic rock out of the way. Uh, <clears throat> you finally get to where it just looks like an unrefined version of Aquamarine, and now you're seeing it for the first time. It literally just looks like a uh, really unrefined gem, a blue gemstone with little trails of, like, red veins that turn into small little globes of red and then return into small little thin veins. You're able to at least, from where you're standing with a little bit of help from Ezra, you might be able to get away with, like I've said, like probably about the size of your upper chest. That's cool. In, all, in we needed was, of this. all we needed was the size of a cannonball and that probably doubles that. So yeah, I, I break away the rock. Ezra clears away the rock. I break away more rock and then we lift this <laughs> bitch out. All right. Uh... I need both of you to roll me a 
<laughs> I need you to roll a sleight of hand. Oh, okay. Uh, 12. 14. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, so you're, you start uh, moving the other rock out of the way, and you notice that a lot of the veins that are around it are like the red... The red, glo uh, the red globes that were in there, they like faded out and have turned gray. That's from the force of you breaking into it. Hmm. So it looks like it has a sort of finite end to it, and with enough blunt force, it could actually like destroy the material inside. Hmm. All right, so I guess we'll just be careful from this point forward. I've never really worked with this before, so. Of course, no, I, that's. I, I understand, <laughs> he says, rubbing his shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> did, did All right. Did you that looked at? Or... Nah, it seems like a small cut. It'll be fine. It's... So with a combined effort of you two with that, uh, you weren't able to get that exact size that I mentioned. You got more of like, maybe like the size of your rib cage. All right, so still the amount that we need to make the yeah, spell Yeah, you, you have the amount you need and then a little bit more, but not as much as you could have gotten away with. All okay. right, well, we'll take that. All right, cool. So you hoist it up. Uh, What's this material called again? Sorbent ore. Sorbent ore. The more, uh, when you apply your hand to it, like your own body heat, one of the globes starts to expand. Mm. So it's very reactive to heat. Oh. Hmm. What happens if I start trying to, uh, elemental attunement allows me to do like heat material, like in the same way thaumaturgy does. Yes. What if I, uh, if I do that, does it react further? It expands, and you watch as the center of it begins to harden and turn into that gray stone. Like All right, the messed up. Door. Yep. <laughs> All right, so heat bad. All right, we'll try to keep it out of direct sunlight, I guess. Oh, no, not, not that. It's not that. <laughs> it's not like a vampire. It's just heat and extreme stress seems to counter-react what mm. it is. It starts to turn it into its fine, hard So version. instead, I will cool material instead. Oh. That metal, that piece that you yeah. tried to char away. That's stuck that way now. Yeah, that that's fine, but I will, for the rest of it, keep it preserved by cooling energy instead. Right on. You. Yes. <laughs> ben, you watch as Onslow and Relieve start carving away at the, uh, at the creature, and Onslow is being way more talkative, but it's more in Draconic. He's now, like, asking, like, oh, so he's, like, pointing at pieces where a shirt would go or, like, a pa uh, pant sleeve would go or even, like, Gloves, and he's trying to like ask like how it forms around like a, a, another person, a humanoid body part. <clears throat> Relieve then takes the good chunk of the pelt and like ushers Onslow to follow him into a tent. Uh, Wait, may I come? May, may I observe? Relieve turns to you and looks to Onslow. Onslow nods. You're allowed inside. Yay! Uh, you see like a a tanning uh, tanning bench. Uh, and a little bit of a crafting table where Relieve now puts it on there and, like, actually, like, takes out a small slab of metal that has numbers on it and actually, like, looks over to Onslow and puts it to his collarbone and, like, drapes it across. Almost okay. It does look like a knife, so from an un... from a... No, with no context, it almost looks like he was taking a knife and slashing it across his throat. And then he takes that he takes that same number and slices it across the tiger as you watch as he's now making a new piece of armor for Onslow. This is so cool. <laughs> uh, I need you to roll me a hmm, roll me a intelligence check. All right. Seventeen. All right. You and Onslow are watching and he's he's asking questions in draconic you're welcome to peep up and say something and then Ansel will translate for you but for the most part it's just two like a komodo dragon and a gator hissing at each other and like <laughs> one inquisitive one giving answers but they both seem pretty jovial about this and the fact that Onslow is like asking a lot of questions and like putting his hand down and like asking about like how does this go here where does this go where and then Onslow is given a small little hammer and a little bit of nails and asked to assist. He then looks and turns to, uh, Relief turns and looks to you, holding materials in his hand. Did, did you need another pair of hands? He like points at you and asks you to stand next to Onslow. I, I do, politely. <laughs> All right, he hands you a small box of nails 
they are fucking rusty and garbage and all kinds of nonsense. Again, the materials were very, very low and very finite in supply. But he asked you to take a good chunk of the where the bone was, where the uh, where the where the spinal cord was. He asked you to now take a bone saw mm-hmm. and cut a small section around the area where a good chunk of the spinal cord was. He like gives you the measurements. I need you. Well, how will you handle this? Uh, I will just try to do exactly what he's what he's instructing me to do. The only problem with that is, is that he's speaking in draconic. <laughs> I'm I'm sorry, Anslow. Could you translate? I'm not I'm not sure I'm hearing the instructions properly. He's asking you to carve at least a decent chunk. He'll try to keep the spine intact. Okay, that's that that's mostly what I was getting, but I wanted to be sure. I need you to roll me a survival check. All right. Eighteen. Relieve was afraid to leave you in charge of doing that. He kind of like looks back at you, but seeing as how you're like actually finding like the pivot where the spine is and able to cut in like the part where like the spine is connected, his worry is completely gone. He goes back to what he's doing. And you carve it completely flawlessly. Yeah, you got it good. <laughs> Relieve then takes the large heavy piece of the of the cat and wraps it around your hand. And takes the little like measurement blade, and kind of like sli- not slices it, but he mm. he takes the blade and it kind of like rides it along your wrist up to where your uh, fingers are, mm-hmm. and he starts writing down measurements on a small piece of paper. Oh, that's neat. I Eloy just stands there quietly and politely and and cooperates with everything. All right, roll me one more survival check for good measure. Nine. Hmm. Okay. Well, I rolled an at one, so. <laughs> oh. Unfortunately, without there is some folly. Uh, again, you're working with the materials for the first time. You figured you got this all straight, but you hear a couple of snips and snaps. Uh, you watch as some of the bone matter that came out of its spine. Some of them are broken, so like relief kind of just like looks at it, just a little disappointed, and kind of just like chucks it to the side. But he still keeps going. He then takes like the paw mark. And kind of, like, takes all the cartilage and the uh, bits of bone that make up the claw and puts it to the end of the glove. Ooh, I, th- I think I see where this is going. Yep. Uh, with a little bit of nailing and cobbling, they return with the ore. You guys hear, like, hammering and a lot of gator and, like, alligator hissing over to the side. Uh, it's in a really large tent. It's kind of, like, the biggest tent out of all of them. What's going on in this tent? Guys, they are so good at this, and they let me help, but honestly, I was learning a lot just watching. Wow, nice. Onslow, like, grabs your hand and puts it on the table. <laughs> Takes, like, a few of the daggers and kind of just, like, puts them in between where your hands are just to spread them out. Oh, I think I've seen this game. Takes another knife. Another one right in between. Another one in between. Mm-hmm. Another one still. in between. Yeah, see, everyone thinks the onus is on the knife wielder, but it's actually the person's hand who can't move. With That's nat- where the real With a nat 20, <laughs> he goes down for another one where your thumb is. He stops. Like, takes your thumb and pushes it a little bit further. Then slams it down. <laughs> <laughs> that was a close one. They start putting pieces of the knuckle and the bone matter from the spine and start putting it into your, like, not into the finger, but, like, on top of your finger. Mm -hmm. They continue to start writing stuff down. And he relieves your hand. After, uh, do you continue to let this go on? Uh, because it looks like they're lost in thought, but I don't, you guys (laughs) don't know how long this is gonna go on for. Uh, but for the most part... I know time for, uh, our good buddy, uh, Koloff is kind of, uh... (laughs) A bit intense, so I'm, I might uh, try to usher away <laughs> into the ocean. Plus, this material doesn't seem the most stable in heat. Mm-hmm. What about you? I, this, I, it looks like so far they've got, like, it looks like, it literally looks like they're working on a gauntlet, a mm-hmm. pair of gauntlets at this yeah. point. Uh, if you guys are, uh, you guys aren't going anywhere for a bit, but uh, this, this stuff kind of needs to get where it's going, so. We do have a bit of a, a delivery timetable. I, I, like, look at the, the progress. 
Like, do you need you need Eloy here for for measurements for these gauntlets? Anso looks over to relieve. They speak in draconic to each other. Anso looks to him. Uh, looks to you guys. Well, if you gotta take care of something, you can rightly just leave me here for a little bit. I might come back with a little bit more knowledge. No, that sounds like a great idea. Uh, uh, we're just gonna be, you know, back out where we were. I just gotta get this stuff to. Uh, just don't go leaving without me now. Well, that's of course, the, that's the plan. <laughs> Eloy's torn for a second. He looks in between. Yeah, I should probably go help them. I'm going to pick your brain so hard when I get back, though. Relief actually like looks to you and then looks to Onslow, like trying to relay what he just what you just said. Within that twenty, <laughs> Relief hands him a small book written in Draconic. Ooh, thank you very much, sir. Like he's talk, he looks to Anso and he looks over to you and he's like, "Not best common, but Anslo described for you, yes." Yes, yes, indeed. Will, will, will you, Mister Onslow? I think we have a few people on board that could read that. Maybe. I know the. I know the. I know the small. The. Uh, yeah. Uh, I know the kobold speaks draconic, so you have two people. But I don't think the boy can rightly know how to make clothes out of the things he kills. Mm. That's what this little handy dandy notebook's all about, son. Well, I mean, he can still translate it. Either way, uh... Either way, congratulations, you now have someone who knows how to make armor for you guys. Hey! Yay. So, you will leave Onslow to his devices at that point? Yep, we'll we'll be back for him. Alright, cool, so you make it back in to fact, the ship. In fact, we'll, like... Oh, wait, uh, yeah, we did not bring two rowboats. That's the we'll problem. We'll be back for him. <laughs> I mean, I could just swim out, frankly, but not everybody else can. Yeah. Well, uh, with that... You leave Onslow to speak to Relieve for the rest of the remainder of the time while he's still working on clothing. Onslow says to you that he can't make a full suit, but with all the materials that you guys gotten for him, he can at least make a piece of equipment for each of you in some way, shape, or form. Ooh. Hmm. And uh, Wake, Re- we'll Relieve would also like to speak to you all at least about trying to get in touch with their supervisor to try and ask them to get more supplies to them as they're low on it and there's fey creatures kind of like destroying a lot of their other supplies. What color is the are, are these tigers uh, fur? Because I know uh, we've, we've had some art out there where like their <laughs> fur was green and stuff and I thought it was adorable, but uh, I th- canonically. I, I like the green, but at the same time, like I'm like... They could be like feyish creatures, but still. Yeah. I, I don't consider them feyish creatures because I, I would have saw like their skin to be like a more like... Sunset dark orange. Okay. Mm-hmm. But with what Onslow is being taught, he can dye the armor, honestly. Oh, no, I, was, I was just curious for the sake of it. I mean, I'm a monk. I don't even know what kind of gear I would need. I'll so s- I have to I'll ponder say let's that go one. for a, a sickly orange then. Okay. Yeah, Wake will ponder what kind of gear he could possibly want from that. It has to be something small. Yeah. And of also, course. remember. You're, it's, it's, uh, it's it's like one piece. Like and, be- and because it's a dire piece of equipment, it might actually have some special additions to it. Yep. Uh, Ezra basically points at his feet, just like some good boots. Like something for, uh, I assume these things can climb really well. You watch his relieve, like grabs your kneecap and hoists you ah! upside down. <laughs> takes right, the, just, I'm just holding this by myself then. <laughs> takes, takes the blade, goes across your feet, goes across your leg. Okay. Yeah. Drop, drops you. <laughs> okay. Uh. And I basically look at Onslow since I know his uh, relieves common isn't the greatest. Just like, you know, something that could maybe help with, with climbing, I think would be really useful because that's something I've messed up a lot and these critters seem real good at that. He pokes, uh, he looks to relieve and looks to the back end where a lot of the other spikes are kind of just like forming at the end. There's a lot of small, tiny spikes kind of like coming out the rear quarters that he could just go pluck them out. And he like, he takes like a small handful of them and puts them to the shoe and just like, or at least like a piece of leather and like makes it out like it's a, a set of cleats and shows oh, it to you. Yeah. That looks great. Thumb, he, thumb, thumbs up from Ezra. He can work <laughs> on that. I mean, if I could use anything, I don't know. Um, I'm down a glove. So if I could get like a new pair of gloves or something. Uh, Relieve looks over to, looks over to Eloy. Oh, he, <laughs> all right. He's got the gloves. He's getting gloves. Gotcha. Uh. Measurements received. (laughs) A 
All right. Oh, does that mean like they have measurements for hands or what? Yeah, they have. He has measurements for him. All right. Uh, well, I. I don't know. He could probably measure your hands though, and see if he can make you know. Make stuff here. Let me try to carry that. <laughs> maybe a new kilt, a tiger skin kilt. That'd be real neat. Huh. I don't know. Nice belt, maybe a kilt. I don't know. I like this. Just sash. You watch as relieve, like when you say that, relieve kind of like looks to you. Takes two giant like railroad spiked, uh, railroad spikes, nails them to the wall with a giant thud. Picks you up. Puts your under your underarms are kind of like spread across the the here I'll hold that the spikes okay. are on your <laughs> underarms like holding you up in a T pose. Uh, he takes the knife uh, and like dra- and races it across your stomach. Feeling a little uh, dominance expo- being asserted here. Exposed here. <laughs> <laughs> he takes uh he takes the knife down your chest, like from the bottom of your neck all the way down. To, like, oh my god, that tickles. <laughs> He like nods to you when a grunt and goes back to work. All right, I think he's got something figured out. I don't think we're gonna talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> and this is where we'll take a short break. Sounds good to Wonderful. me. <laughs> we'll be right back after this. <gasps> Welcome back to the table. All right, so uh, everybody's on their way back out to see so that we can go deliver this hunk of metal to yes. our boy Koloff. All righty, so. You take your rowboat back to the ship. It's been, I'm going to say, like, three, four hours have passed at this point. Yeah, I'll say we'll go pick up Onslow, like, near dusk. Mm-hmm. Um, you get back to the ship. Uh, everyone pretty much just, like, gets you on board. Uh, Ave actually kind of just, like, shuffles. She, actually, she she's still on the she's ship. A, you can see her off of the distance. She's on, our sh- oh, she's on her ship, yeah. She's on her ship. She's off of the distance. You actually see uh, a familiar face kind of like on the deck of your ship, kind of just like sitting there with his arms folded behind him in a big old metal suit. It's your boy, Troll Hul- uh, Troy Hulch. Oh. Oh, hey, Turt, Oi, and Hulch. Uh, how'd you uh, how'd you get over here? I, I don't imagine you swam. We were dropped here, sir. We were ah. dropped here. Uh, also impressive. Did, did you also meet the storm giant? No, we were on the ship just as you. No. Oh. Uh, but, if you'll like, uh, excuse me, that I was about to go do some, you know, underwater maintenance on our ship. Just make oh, no, sure everything's course. on. Oh no, of course it was. Right. I just felt it would be, I felt it would be a grand idea if we just kept a company and speak to your crew. We have not seen each other in quite some time. Yeah, it's been a yeah, while. Yeah, like you, you, he has been like talking to Red and uh, Pliskin and Risk this whole time. I do my best to take any attention away from from Wake <laughs> in case he wants to just saunter off with the oar. It's yeah, like, the oar is still in the rowboat. We wouldn't have shown that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm just like, ah. Anyway, I'm just gonna go wander. Like, as I st- start walking backwards, just go wander back. Bloop, <laughs> just fall into the water with the oar behind my back. You see, you look down below. There's, like, Koloff, like, waving his hand, his fat little stubby hand, just like, <laughs> behind a rock. This is really hard to swim with. <laughs> Roll an athletics check. Yeah. Because while I do have a natural swim speed, I am trying to carry a torso-sized piece of metal. Oh, that's pretty good, though. Uh, 23. Yeah, you get down there with no problem. Mother. You give it to Koloff. Koloff kind of just like... <laughs> <laughs> All right, this, uh, just in Aquan, since that's, you know, underwater, easier to speak that way. Mm-hmm. All right, so this should be enough, right? Yes, it should. I mean, I mean, like, it, it's fine. This will this will work just fine, yes. Now, we just need to find some way to get the Navy to not be looking at the statue while I get this to work. You you seem disappointed about that. No, I'm not. I'm not disappointed at all. I'm I'm thinking of ways to make that happen. I mean, they can look. It'll they'll just watch the entire thing sink, and then I'll be exposed, and I don't want to be exposed. Well, I mean, the entire thing's going to sink anyway. I think that will draw some attention, unless. I mean, there's there's a lot more. There's all the same. Maybe maybe we could have one grow, and then the other one shrink. No, Wait, I, that wouldn't make sense. I think I, I think I. Uh, I think I have a trial by fire coming on here. What are you thinking? You just leave that to me. <laughs> no. Uh, okay. Great things just... to say to the DM. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just uh, leave but, that to me. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, sure. So, so what I'm <laughs> All right. 
But uh, our side of the deal was that you would enchant something for us, right? Of course, but we have we have to at least get rid of. No, of course. Hey, please. We'll... The the moment I'm I'm free of any Koloff. collusion to all of this. Koloff. Yes. Bubbla. We'll take care of this for you. <laughs> Leave it to the natural wonders. As Wake darts back up. How did he know that's what my mother called me as a child? <laughs> <laughs> he seems like a Yiddish fish. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you get back up on the on the ship. Yeah, I go over to Ezra. So, uh, we need to distract them. The entire <laughs> Navy. <laughs> the entire Navy. Ezra, not looking like perturbed, just looks deep in thought. For how long? <laughs> I'm going to say 10 minutes would probably be enough. So, look, I know none of us have done this. I already this have an idea. I know Troy, none of us. buddy, it's been so long. What do you say to a picnic on the beach? You well, know, your guys, our guys, we, we have like a regular old mixer. I Try was going to say it's been a long day. I mean, we haven't had a chance to uh, practice anything, but if we were to, I don't know, run Put a on show. perhaps a show, <laughs> even, to just really, you know, uh, just... Show our appreciation for the Navy. Yeah, celebrate our friendship and just, you know, this this glorious chance meeting that even though, yes, it is kind of bogged down by this current problem we have, we don't have to think about or even look at that. We could focus on, on the future and our glorious relationship that we can just enhance by this chance meeting we've been we've been blessed with. Well, at least one of us is on duty. I know our hotties down below speaking with your cook. Really? Wow, that is that's, a that's got to be an amazing conversation. Yeah, um, <laughs> to be a fly on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> no, that fly'd probably get cooked. <laughs> but uh, you know, I mean, just you know, it, it would make us feel better to thank you guys for the things that you've. Yeah, definitely. Us with. And like, it's just it's it just seems like it would be such a shame for one of you guys just to miss that and, just, so, just by staring at some big rock in the water. And in all honesty, we have a, like, there's a, there, I know Eloy's performing for the calls, and just as kind of a warm-up, this would make us feel a little bit better. Yeah, and, this you would know, be great. Persuasion. I was going to throw in one more thing, and, you know, you know, throw in your head against that giant stone obelisk over and over again. It's not getting anything done. Maybe this will help something click. I'll assist with my really shitty charisma score, but that's not a bad roll, though. 12. Uh, 21. You have his attention. <laughs> I'm just saying Except that the rest of the crew is looking at you like, what the fuck? I mean, come on, guys. Wouldn't it be great if we could all just get together and hang out with the Navy and just, you know, make sure that we're all on the same page? Come on, guys. Scrub. All eyes will be on us. It'll yeah. be great. Scrung just looks at the rest of you. No. <laughs> well, not everybody has to take plate, to like you know, take part and perform. But obviously, you'd love to join a, a picnic on this beautiful beach we have, Scrung. and just take in a show. And Scrung, trust me, it would be great for everyone. Wake's gonna go try talk to Scrung. I think out of everybody, Wake has the most rapport with Scrung, and that's still not much. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like he's just gonna kind of take him aside. Look, I know you're due for a win, and I promise you, like this doesn't make sense right now, but. If we can make this work, I think I can get you a win here. What's this win? I think I might be able to help you find the person you're looking for, or at least get something that can help uh, but you but find but but He, like, puts his finger to your lips. <laughs> How? Don't tell me that it can be explained later. Explain it now. From my cartographer's kit, I pull out a compass. An enchanter will owe me a favor. If I can get him to enchant this with a locate creature spell, we can find Grosswort if he is any time within some range of us. This will point directly to him. If we can get it to work. Persuasion. Fuck me, nat 20. <laughs> this is a good day for this dice. It's a good day for 20s and yeah. around. I only had one nat 1 today. Uh, I like, had... Skrung just, like, takes a big drag of his cigarette. Do me a favor. He, like, oh, he asks you to hold your hand out. I do. He, like, kind of, like, starts flicking the ash on, on your hand. 
I just no, no, no. Try, okay, no, I'm no. holding. No, he he like stops you. He's like, don't no. I'm, I'm, I'm. Slap me in the face with it. <laughs> Do you like get across a, the face? Let's go. Do you have a preference at how hard or just? Don't hurt me. Just make sure the ash gets on my face. All right. One second. He runs off. He starts pet. You watch as he like starts taking a disguise kit and start applying stuff to his face. He turns around. He's now has like he has white paint, little streaks under his eyes. He looks like he's dead tired. And little red rosy patches and a big honking nose. <laughs> See, Cap just takes a little bit of conversation. <laughs> Scrub your ladies. No, 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 sir, sir. Please call me Scrungliachi. <laughs> Scrungliachi. <laughs> and. <laughs> what an honor! I have like a hand on Troy's like shoulder, like just trying to like emphasize. And, uh, to even to my own disbelief, the the premiere of Scrungliachi, the clown. Oh my goodness! I, no one knows what it's like <laughs> to be the sad man. Oh, you'll have to get your entire crew. Okay. Every <laughs> every available <laughs> eye and ear will need to witness this. It's you're witnessing history. I honestly feel bad for the people behind the rock. Obvious. We need to get all of them. If you could, you just see Grammy slowly pan up out of the camera <laughs> with a pie. <laughs> Troy, if you could gather every available Navy person to to come and just celebrate, give them the night off just for for this. They have to witness this amazing show. Maybe we should be talking to, you know, Ave. Oh yeah, but I'm. I mean. I'm just so excited, Wake. I, I need to tell uh, and clear, everyone and clear, I can. And clear, look, I can see it on Tur's face. <laughs> Oi, is, he seems like asleep, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Hulch digs it. <laughs> <sighs> well, I will explain to the captain that there might be a show for us. Please wait. A groundbreaking show. History. A world premiere. <laughs> it's like Xbox, like the Microsoft EA <laughs> thing. There's so many world premieres. But no exclusives. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, I'm going to say I think Scrung Liachi's a Natural Wonders exclusive. <laughs> Scrung man. <laughs> There's no need to feel down. I said Scrung, Scrung man. man. Cause I know a great clown. I said, <laughs> Scrung man, Scrungly Yachi's in town. There's no need to be unhappy. Except me. <laughs> Roll a persuasion with advantage. Uh, that's one. Let's, let's see, what's my persuasion? 723. <laughs> All right, give me like four hours. You watch as Ave ship turds and heads over towards you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, uh, Wake's gonna like. I mean, everybody else has to figure out what they're doing, but Wake's going to go talk with Nedra because their part is just going to be a basically a combat showing, you know, yeah. showing of martial prowess. But he also <laughs> wants to talk to Nedra a little bit because he hasn't had a chance to. All right. Ezra, like, is fiddling with the staples on her tail. <laughs> Just stand still. Just there. All right. I think. Oh I got no no no! It. It's been fixed. It's been a fix back on. It's just that it's like it's got like the stitching on it. No, wrap okay. a nice bandage around it. Yeah. She's like this How's itch that? is so bad. Nah, you can't scratch it, otherwise it won't heal yeah, right. You you don't pick at it. <laughs> I know it's, she it's like, hard. She like folds her arms. She's like, damn just it. Think of it as part of like the focus training or something. I don't know. Something you monks do. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Just nonchalantly dismisses your entire lifestyle. <laughs> anyway, when you're done, like Wake was gonna have like a one-on-one -on -one with Nedro whenever you were. All right, All right well, I figure I, you have to go preen other people and figure that, out what the fuck they're that doing. That should hold. Hopefully, uh, you guys can figure out some co some sort of cool like fight routine, right? Just something flashy. We'll just, I get to punch things now. Oh yeah, we'll 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 spar for them, but uh. Oh goody! Great, great. I got like eight other plates I need to spin. Thanks. <laughs> you're welcome. 
Uh, no one knows what it's like. <laughs> Scrunch just juggling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, with one hand. <laughs> what? I got this. Hey. I got this. Hey, you know what? <laughs> I'm going to say the act is figured. But out. <laughs> it's amazing also, what you could do with the right motivation, huh, Captain? <laughs> also, uh, Nedra, I did want to uh, address something real quick. Okay, what is it? And you just see, like, she has, like, she has, she pulls, like, it off the bed and just, like, puts it on the top of a crate. I, I give, I give it, like, a little pet. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. <laughs> <laughs> He's ticklish. I wanted to apologize, Nedra. I've been... I've been training you, but I don't feel like I deserve to be your master. I mean, sure, there are some things that I can teach you, and I'd love to continue teaching you, you know, the ways I fight and the ways I work, but at the end of the day, that same rage that I saw in you, it's in me too. And for the longest time, I've been controlling it and focusing it, turning it into a <clears throat> weapon for myself, but... It still overwhelms me. Well, I'll be, I'll be honest with you too. I still hear the voices in my head too. I've just been telling them to shut up. That's... It gets annoying, but it, I've that's what everyone's been telling me I should be doing. I'll tell you what, Nedra. From this point on, I'll still gladly teach you how to read, how to write, how to fight with my ways. I will teach you my ways, but. When it comes to inner focus and being at peace with yourself, it's never even made sense to me. So from this point forward, rather than be your master in that regard, I want to be a student along with you. Well, then who's going to teach us? Life. We'll have to hold each other to each other's example because... We both know what we're trying to deal with here, and we both have to keep each other in check. But that's the thing, Wake, is you say that she, like, looks at you a little bit, looks down on herself. I don't know that. I've been pushed from side to side going to other places because no one wants to at least hold my hand in some regard, like you said. The... The last people I was with, they told me just to go punch things so things would be simple. And then I get tossed to Mr. Theraday, and now here I am on this ship. Life's never easy, and I've always came to this weird grip that even my time here would be short. Well, we don't know how much time we each have wherever we end up. But for the record, I do hope that our time here will be long, and... While I can't take your hand as a guide, I do want to take your hand as an equal. And he holds out his hand just kind of as like a sign of friendship. Like She grabs your hand. Yeah, they grab wrists. Yeah, like, like the, you son of a bitch. Yeah, <laughs> you motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she does so. She agrees. She's not a, uh, like, she was serious about before. She's just like, look, man, I've been passed along how many fucking years now? And I was... I don't want to, but I've come to grips very firmly that there are there's a good chance that I'll just get pushed on because that's life. That's well, been my life. I wanted to assure you that as long as I'm here on this ship, you'll always have a place at the very least. And no matter where I end up, if you decide to go with me, then I'm... You're always welcome with me, Nedra. That's nice to know. It's at least nice to know there's a place that I'm welcome and not just pushed to the side or made a burden you're not a burden she's she gives you a hug wake hugs back now let's go punch things she grabs her bat yeah all right try to go a little loose i'm still coming down off a trip <laughs> it watches them the <laughs> oh he was gonna say something to you oh okay i'm looking at him what's up buddy <laughs> uh. 
Wake's going to see if that like you rings a bell. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, I, I go to the barrel of honey and I just ladle some into his drawer, or his uh, bowl. He just snatches the ladle and dives into the barrel. All right. Yeah, you just enjoy that. <laughs> <sighs> okay, so... Yeah, wait, yeah wait, wait goes off and just kind of preps. So, yeah, from this point forward, Wake and Nedra are going to try to keep each other in check when it comes to... I'm going to say... Controlling their rage. Okay, I'm going to say that it's been maybe... Four hours have passed by, and you got some prep work going on. The sun is now close to setting. Yeah, we're we're over on the beach trying to set up a makeshift stage. <laughs> and then you do there's Grammy step, like pivot, setting up everything. Step. Do I have to do everything my fucking <laughs> self? You idiots! Oslo, not Oslo. <laughs> Pliskin, make sure that's up straight, you idiot. We're doing this on sand. Oh yeah, we should probably tell Oslo what's going on. Ah, we can get him after the show. He he seemed really interested in what he was doing. It's not like we're leaving. Yeah, Wake and Nedra get up in their their ba- their va- their battle vestments that he had made in uh, Bolkard. Alrighty, uh, so I'm gonna ask. Uh, so who's gonna be performing this whole time? Ezra's going to be presenting, so I think he chooses yeah, like, what goes on first and what the context is. I'm like, so MC. explain to me what do we have in store for the audience? Okay, well, things will start off with uh, you know some. Red's gonna have some, some, some flashes of magic, just some flair, just some, you know, real exciting visual stuff. As I come out, just you know, ladies and gentlemen. So she's basically pyrotechnics <laughs> yes. over on the side. Mm-hmm. You you enter to a cloud of smoke. <laughs> <laughs> Feast your eyes, ladies and gentlemen of the navy. Behold, we are the natural wonders. <laughs> First, Thunderclap. <laughs> First up. Strength, like you've n- like you would never believe, an unparalleled force, a fighting twosome unlike anything ever seen on land or sea or sky. It is the one and only Turf and Surf, Nedra and Wake. <laughs> <laughs> Eloy's the in the cloud- back conjuring minor <laughs> illusions of fireworks going off everywhere. The cloud of smoke clears. Wake and Nedra are standing there, in battle position. Wake gives a bow. And then they begin sparring. Two seasoned warriors facing off. Performance check from everyone. Performance check. I'm fighting. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta make it flashy for him. Yeah, but I mean, like, we did this same shit when going into Ebra Call, and people <laughs> were just watching it while we were sparring. So I think we're just going all out on each other. All right. Either I'll way, my performance roll. is a 24. 19. Okay, I'll let you roll athletics. Yeah, then. Wake does not perform. This is real! <laughs> oh god, help! <laughs> yeah. No, shit can go real bad. Uh, modified 20. It's going real bad for Nedra. Oh no! <laughs> she is you, losing you kinda, this fight. You kind of like, she comes at you, you're dodging left and right, you're actually just like, whoosh, 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 whoosh. she comes at you with the bat, you kind of like push it into her forehead, kind of like a curly Joe moment. Yeah, cl- clack it straight up yeah. forward. While Nedra <laughs> comes in with unyielding strength, Wake shows that, like the water, he can flow and adapt to any situation and scenario, moving as deftly as nature itself. Wake kicks up a bit of a dust cloud as he flourishes and does a couple of like flip kicks towards her. Oh, that's what we're doing. Okay, she en- she enacts her uh, she enacts hellish rebuke. <laughs> <laughs> However, even the most adaptable student of of the of the fist is not ready for the elemental forces of your nightmares. <laughs> I'm scary. <laughs> <laughs> and she's modest, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah, Wake and Nedra just continue to spar, putting on as much of a show as they can with it. All right, <laughs> so we'll let that pass. Yeah. Uh, we'll move on to what, what's an, next. An amazing battle to be to behold, truly. But if that... if. <laughs> If the pain from their strikes is something that alarms you, prepare yourself for the splitting side antics of Scrungliachi the Clown! <laughs> Rides out on a little unicycle. It's also, no. Oh yeah, he's sitting on a unicycle. Holds up a pie. Puts it Weep! Down. Tears! Puts it, puts it down, no, puts it down on the floor. Points to you to give a drum roll persuade, uh, performance check. While this is going on, I like stealth over to wake with a. Uh, I shit you not, twenty nine. Wow. 
Yeah, second highest roll I'm capable of. The entire audience is awestruck at what the fuck is happening <laughs> as Grabby pulls the curtain to the side and there's a small, like, you know what Sonic, like the like a half pipe loop-de-loop? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Scrug holds his arm out. Drum roll. <sighs> spins around in a circle. Builds up momentum and speed. Hits the ramp. <laughs> Acrobatics with a nat 20. Whoa! Death defying! Goes up, upside down. Goes across the entire roofing. Stops on top of the pie. And drops head first on top of it. An impossible display of acrobatics, ladies and gentlemen! <laughs> oh no, it's not done. Also, he's got pie on him. Huh. Oh no. But wait, there's more! It's he, not done. Eloy's on his portable piano playing musical accompaniment, <laughs> Mickey Mouse style, along with every movement he makes. Very vaudeville. Yep. Yep. You watch as Scrung begins to fly up, like slowly. Upside down, turns back around. Amazing. He looks up. He looks to everyone. Sits down. He like he looks like he's sitting on a stool. He like just, kind just of like covering takes, in the air. Yeah, just takes a cigarette. Life as tomatoes begin <laughs> shotgunning at his face. <laughs> the man is just being pelted with tomatoes. Everyone in the audience is laughing. Look on in dismay and comedy as as our poor Scrungliachi just showed that he is life's great cosmic joke and eternal suffering. I like to imagine even Ave Lowe, who's very stoic, just like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, you roll a roll an investigation check. Oh. Perception, investigation. Oh, uh, you know perception. That's fine. Yeah, uh, twenty-four. You watch as Ave just goes. <laughs> <laughs> But ladies and gentlemen, behold, feast your eyes upon the... While this is going on, Skrung's still sitting up there. <laughs> Wonders and knowledge and sights beyond your very comprehension. For now, <clears throat> Eloy, with his power of magic and music, will take you on a journey far beyond the realms you've ever witnessed into the land of imagination. Eloy plays his brand new ballad, which will never be performed <laughs> ever, ever again. again. All sense. <laughs> Pistachio 2, The Revenge of Simon the Poomonger, which makes the first one sound like hot bullshit. But because I had no time to prepare, <laughs> you will not hear it. The folks today. at home will never hear. This was but just know that it's, it's, yeah. his mag it's, it's not. This a was a beachside <laughs> performance exclusive. <laughs> There's some context missing. The audience doesn't know what the fuck is happening. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> but boy, is it a thrilling ride. Sometimes no, you all, all it takes is... All it takes is... Like, after that whole story, like, the, the entire audience is silent. They're scrung. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> all right, so does anyone, uh... While this is going on, does anyone want to take a perception check to see what's going on with that uh, face over there? Yeah, once Wake got off stage, I was going to say he was going to do that. 25. 21. <clears throat> uh, 17. While this is going on, you all notice that uh, the silhouette that's out in the water as the sun's peering off into the hills, it looks like it's shrinking and shrinking as time goes on. <laughs> Only now thought about how suspicious it's going to be when I'm like, oh, we put on a show, and while that show happened, the problem solved itself. Hey, Wake, uh, by Weird. the way, so you're off in the distance, right? You're, you and Nedra. I'm backstage. Yeah. yeah, you and Nedra are backstage. You just hear, like, sloshing and something, like, coming towards you. I turn. There's Cole off. He, like, jumps at your feet, like, oh, oh. <laughs> Shh, there's a show happening. <laughs> and, like, Nedra, Nedra is just like... No, 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 he's fine, he's fine. It's, oh no! <laughs> it's, this is terrible! I did it! I did it! We, we, the, the plan say. Oh no! Good, and nobody's watching, but what's wrong? What, no, no, no! What the f no. Okay, what is. I slap him again. Oh, thank you. What is happening? I say in Aquan, low key. <laughs> Let's see. We did it. I, I don't know what's going to happen afterwards. I promise you I get your enchantment. That's great. I'll do anything, but just, you got to help me. you got to help me. There's, I, I, did, I took care of everything, but Good. now we have an even bigger problem. Okay, what's the bigger problem? There's something swimming out there in the water that's bigger than anything. It's bigger than all the vorpals out in the water. 
that's that's real big. It's just, yeah, I, I don't I don't know if this is true or not. It's it's a fa- that's fairy tale logic, but I think it might be a dragon. Nah, it couldn't be. <laughs> I hope I hope it's not, but it's it's big, and ever since I got rid of the statue, it's been swimming around over there the entire time. <laughs> What about the Navy ship that was over there to begin with? Where's that? It doesn't know about that, and that's where Raul is. I don't want to go there! Okay, fine, fine. Just be somewhere other than where the dragon is and not directly here where you'll be spotted by the Navy. <laughs> this is the worst Slap! Get ever. it together! Oh. This is your life now. <laughs> <laughs> He's, cry- He's crying. What the out. hell is going on in here? Eloy's putting on the performance of his fucking life, and you two are in here making a noise. God! We have to grab right where we want them. There's a dragon! Yeah, there might be a dragon. Do you want me to go check it what out? What color was this dragon? Blue! That's bad. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you want me to check it out, or do you want, like... Um... So we I'm gotta just, tell someone. They'll can't lift the Navy gets caught by surprise. Nothing can help us. Wait. <laughs> this dude's all about ego. If it's him, do you think he wouldn't want to be on he'd the wanna, center of attention? He'd want to make a flashy entrance. <laughs> okay, I think I see what you're getting at. All right. <laughs> <laughs> what do we do? All right, you just... You just need to you get out of here. Good, just go somewhere. I have a plan. We think we turn our eyes to the dragon? I think so. Okay. Just <laughs> making sure we're on the same page. Yeah. Ahem, runs out to the stage. Ladies and gentlemen, an unexpected twist in this story. We, in fact, have a surprise guest. Behold, in the water! <laughs> I, like, motion <laughs> towards what we're looking for. Can we get, like, some, like, oh, no, dramaturgy never... out there? Oh. Well... Koloff told you that there's a dragon under the water. It never yeah. broke the surface. Oh, yeah, I know, but if we could shine a light out there somehow, maybe. How will you do that? I don't know. We, Thaumatur- we've does thaum- yeah. yeah, we have a spotlight. Does thaumaturgy have that effect? Yes. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Beam so, of light. So, cir- into- circling out there somewhere. All right. Trying to find the shadow. In some strange miracle and catastrophe, while one problem seems to have solved itself, another has appeared. Red looks over to you with, with like, the biggest wide eyes, just like, no. <laughs> She's, her, a nightmare from the deep, thought dealt with. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> Some have called him, perhaps, a watery explosion. The mightiest. The mightiest, in fact. And ladies and gentlemen, this is no part of the act, this is no bit, this is no joke. We may be in actual Red danger. Like she, Red looks like she's having a stroke right now. <laughs> but my crew has just alerted me that there may be a creature from beyond our reckoning and understanding. A dragon in the very waters that surround us. Red, you now watch as Red takes a flask. <laughs> I am sorry to alarm all of those who were enjoying this merriment and time of joy. Performance. But something may have happened. Not great. Uh, <laughs> ten. <clears throat> You're vamping a little too much. Yeah, it's, uh, 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 it's big and scary and the, and the water and... They're taking it far too well with the two. Cool. And it's, it's a nightmare before us, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so Pliskin is kind of shining the spotlight out into the ocean, trying to just keep up with what the fuck is going on, not sure what's happening. And you watch uh, we... as the silhouette of a sea dragon comes up out of the water. You, by the gods... You, just because the spotlight's on doesn't mean you can't see it from that distance unless with a perception check. 17. Net 20. Well, 26. Your, your elf eyes got it. What do your elf eyes see? Your elf eyes see... Yeah, that's a blue dragon, but there's a giant, like, slashed film across the eyes of the face, and the creature looks left and right vacant. Now, hearing the commotion and seeing the spotlight, it kind of, like, leers back, not sure if it wants to proceed looking towards you. This strange creature from the deep erupts with gurgling eyes. (laughs) 
Behold, it's... It's coming towards you now. Behold, it's Nightmare's figure as it approaches! This is kind of not going. Perhaps it's, the mighty natural wonders can see to the threat. It's, it's, uh, but lo, people, do not fear you, for your lives, for you are in the safety and good hands of the very old natural wonders. They're scrung. <laughs> Scrungliachi will save us all, surely. You watch and if not he, then perhaps you just the watch. mighty turf and surf. <laughs> Right, uh, you watch just, you, you, when you say that, Scrung just like gets down on his unicycle and just rides off stage. No, your comedic timing was perfect. <laughs> but fortunately, we have strong warriors here in the form of Turf and Surf. Yep, uh, just holding out here, holding actions, <laughs> holding actions, Captain. <laughs> the creature approaches even further, even closer. You are getting just flashbacks of Pops Ravi all over again. <laughs> oh, no. Does he smell like raptor junk? <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't okay. know. Yeah. I don't know. We don't know. Okay. Might have washed off. Will be forever a mystery. <laughs> However, roll an intelligence check all of you. Straight intelligence? Yep. 10, 15, 13. 15? Mhm. The color patterns on this one is a little strange. It's Whereas Pops Robbie's like entire like upper section of his body was like a deep royal blue, this one kind of looks like a sickly, almost pale blue as it reaches into the light even more, as it's kind of like lurching its way forward. It then kind of like veers off to the left and then wobbles back towards the light, but then veers off to the right, almost like it can't see. This... Its eyes are now glazed over, and when it opens its eyes, it's not that normal yellow that you saw in Pops Robbie's eyes. It's like muted and almost looks like it's it looks like it's straight up blind. Hey, Risf, uh, how much do you know about you know dragons? I mean, we've met the one, but well, the two. I, 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 is this one blind? <laughs> like Risf looks out. I'm gonna roll an intelligence check for Risf. I don't know. It just it's. I don't know what's wrong with it, but it it certainly is bobbing its head strangely. And uh, hey, you. You okay? It turns hearing your voice as like the tendrils around it like perk up. Then it just like goes forward a little bit more. It like stops midway at the, at the, uh, it stops just before its body can go, like its upper shoulders like appear now like lurching out of the water. It leans its head forward. Yeah, this thing is completely different. It's got, a weird, like, set of, like, its, its face is a little bit rounder. Its head, the crest where all the tendrils are, kind of, like, turn into small horns that peek up. And then the tendrils go behind the horns. And this creature's face, like, the entire front area of where its eyes are, it's completely grayed out. And it looks like it's just, like, a giant gash across the face. So it looks like it has, like, a massive scar right there? It looks like a scar, but it's not, like, physical scarring. It's, like, it, it looks like it's just malnourished skin. Okay, uh, you, wait. Eloy, Eloy uh, casts Minor Illusion at maximum range, so 30 feet out into the ocean in case the thing decides to attack. Hi, do you need assistance? Just throws his voice out there. As, as loud as he can make it and as far away as he can make it. The so if this thing the creature attacks. turns left and right, looks out towards you. I'm gonna roll for it. With a nat one, <laughs> it kind of like, it looks out and then turns to the right and looks out to, towards the forest and thinks that's where you're looking. That's where you're aiming at. Are you the ones who took care of it? It's a female voice. Wake is familiar with, uh, you know, deep water creatures. Oh. Would uh, this maybe be some sort of adaptation to living deep, deep underwater? No, this just looks like sickness. Okay. Uh, took care of what? The giant. Were you the ones who, who took care of him? Well, through the power of the natural wonders, all things are uh, possible. It's, it's quite... Uh, we have we have toppled giants and beings alike with when our. Your, when your voices get loud, she she shrivels and kind of like cowers. Oh, that's okay. We we talk normal with, with our uh, with our comedic abilities. Maybe I'm I'm not sure the the giant of which you speak. You're talking about the giant man or the giant rock? There's a there was a 
she like kind of peers in. She looks down, she, like her snout kind of like goes across the water and like almost hits it to you guys. Like mm-hmm. one of the tendrils kind of like like lurches out of the way, roll an acrobatics check. Easy, easy. She's not doing this on purpose. Yeah. Oh wow, yeah, nat 20 again. Jesus, what is up tonight? Uh, 13 for me. Oh. 13 also. Wait, just tries to kind of like guide her as she goes past. Easy. Oh yeah, you you you're Chris Pratting right now, like just holding your arms out, kind of like easy, easy. It's okay. These two get bowled over by <laughs> a tendril. <laughs> oh, watch out. Yeah. She, you guys like fall on your feet prone for five points of damage as she's now looking over you, just like oh, she like she she felt that, but she's now looking over at Eloy because he's the bigger like he's the wider aspect as a point as opposed to Ezra. He also has a stronger smell. He's just like looking down at you. She's like, "Oh, is is that you?" Hi, I'm I'm Eloy. Hello, Eloy. I I don't know how to describe my name and my language to you, but I believe the common tongue is woe. Woe? Yes, W O E. So what you're saying is woe is me? Well, woe is her. Woe is her, but yes. I don't. She she's just like she's just like confused. Just like I don't know. That's what I've that's what I've heard. It's a, it's a com- it's a common idiom. We she, she doesn't she doesn't <laughs> sound like she understands that. Yeah. We met a giant. I, I wouldn't say we took care of him. He's still here. She like cowers. Back. No 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 that 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 one's gone. Uh y- yes we scared it away. It it ran off. Deception. It did run off. I'm not mm-hmm. technically lying. <laughs> But uh, you're 30. not talking about the giant that she's talking about. Oh, well, I don't know what giant she's talking about. Exactly. You didn't, Fair you enough. didn't press. 13. 13. She she just, like, shakes her head. She's like, no, you're far too small. There's no way he'd be scared of you. What kind of giant was he? Maybe we saw It him. was the marble giant out in the water. The entire Navy looks at you. Oh, the big face? Did that get taken care of? That's awesome. What happened? That is as much of a mystery to me as it is to anyone else. <laughs> Especially me. <laughs> Eloy wasn't there for this whole plan. He's just been enjoying putting on a show. Mm-hmm. So he's telling the truth, as, a, as he understands it. With a deception of a modified 20. Well, <laughs> my friendly dragon, we, we have no idea what happened to the monolith, but... It's been something we've been we've been marooned here because of it. So if it's gone, then this is a celebration for all of us. You hear someone in the audience slay the dragon. What? No, this 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 noble beast has come to us seeking help, not not a fight. There's no reason to slay it. The natural wonders don't. What does that mean? You hear woe kind of just like, she, or like her voice like like sc- scratchy and scared. She just looks out. What does that mean? She's looking over to you. Are you asking? She's not looking directly at you. She's like looking above you because her eyes are so fucked up she can't see. Well, not not to offend, but the last blue dragon that we met was was not nearly as friendly as you are, ma'am. You know of the other blue dragon then? That's why I came here. I was lost from my I well, I guess I should explain. I came down here with migrating with my herd, and I got lost in the storm. I got lost in a storm. I was pushed away, though. I did. I did sense that there was another dragon nearby. I just couldn't find him. I was stuck here, and then that giant face came out of the water, and I was so scared. I didn't know what to do. I thought the giant would take me out, and I don't know, probably hurt me. I, c- I can't see that great. Well, it won't hurt you anymore, as it apparently just decided to leave. You see Cole off off in the distance. (laughs) (laughs) Some would say as mysteriously as it appeared, it vanished. Incredibly. How odd. Anyway, whoa, you are much more polite and pleasant than the last dragon I I had the, well, last blue dragon I had the pleasure of knowing. Yeah, you wouldn't like this guy. He's kind of a prick. What is? But but you mean you mean us no harm, correct? You 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 are just inquiring about the giant. I was, well, I wanted to at least say thank you to those who relieve relieve me of getting hurt by the giant. If it's, I can't really see you that great. Are you humans? Some of us. There's a wide range of creatures here on this beach. We're actually putting on a show. 
If you're ever asked who got rid of the stone giant and helped you, just remember Ezra Lockwood's natural wonders. I mean, we didn't have anything to do with the stone. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, what, you know, I mean, the, if, I was if, going they, to if say, they want someone to thank. Avelo standing right next to the both of you. You could also thank the magnificent Navy that's here. As, as far as we know, they're just as responsible for this. That's true. I mean, there was the one ship out there. Deception or persuasion? Which are you picking? I'm picking deception. Uh, 21. She takes off her glove and slaps you across the face. Ah! Don't insult my intelligence. What are you talking about? We don't know what happened here. I figured your guy must have done something. She snaps her finger and you watch as Arahati kind of like takes Cole, uh, Cole off out with his arms behind his back. What did I say about hiding, dude? Just hiding. I'm sorry. You're real bad at this. I was so scared. <laughs> this is Koloff. He made a mistake. We helped him to amend that mistake. I'm an enchanter by trade. I, I accidentally made the giant statue grow. I'm sorry. We all make mistakes. Ezra very quickly, rather than address the Avelo or the Navy, who are clearly upset at him, he turns to the dragon. Oh, so this giant was just a big statue. It, it wasn't something that was threatening you. I'm, I'm sorry if, uh, if, you're, if, if you weren't able to detect that, but it, it was apparently just a, a statue. It, it meant you no harm. I apologize for any confusion. She looks down at Koloff. Was that part of your show? My what? No, no, the, the, the show was to distract everybody from what? our trouble. <laughs> it was to make everyone happy. Yeah. That's the goal of the show. Yes. Distract them from their we were, troubles. Yes, we were putting on the Meanwhile, show. Meanwhile, here comes Onslow. Fellas, look at me. He's dressed up as a dress of fucking tiger. See, is, Onslow. is Onslow in a fursuit? <laughs> yeah, I discovered my just, true being. No. <laughs> Shows up no. in a spiky tiger kigu. It's, just, it's Bowser dressed up as a tiger. It's Scott's <laughs> <Yeah>. wet dream. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good shit. We are not making this canon. <laughs> but feel free to make all the fan art. Anyway, oh. Ezra's just desperately and, trying and to, to only post the PG fan art. <laughs> Des Ezra desperately tries to keep. Uh, Please do. To keep all sides under control with just welcome back, Onslow. No, the, uh, the, 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 mon the monolith was not part of our show. It was an unexpected side effect of, a, of an unrelated an experiment pattern. gone wrong. And apparently, while, while we were putting on our show to just, you know, try and ease everybody's minds and make them feel like, you know, the day hadn't been wasted because the problem hadn't been solved. It turns out the problem managed to solve itself as we were putting on our show. I apologize to anyone who feels deceived. Just remember that the Lockwood Natural Wonders brought you so much joy and fun. <laughs> we were told to stay out of the way. As he slinks back. Persuasion. Of course. Uh, 13. Oh, that's not that bad. It's not terrible, but it was a, like a 19 <laughs> and then rolled to something way worse. Ave kind of just like pinches her eyes. How far in collusion are with you with, uh, how far in collusion are you with the fish? He asked me for a favor. You guys told us to stay out of the way. We thought, you guys will try your methods. We'll try our method. If it works, it works. That's great. We literally just met him. He doesn't seem like a bad guy, though. He just seems a He's little... Sweating. <laughs> He's very nervous. He's a very nervous fellow. And he's having a rough go of it as of late. She snaps her finger and Arahati lets him go. <laughs> oh, goodness. You okay, Koloff? <laughs> I don't know anymore. Okay, apologize to the nice Navy. Apologize for nothing. My wife was stolen. Not by all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Is he 
it seems he had a run in with one of your high ranking officers and really didn't want that to Look, come. Look, he's not here, but these are the people that you trapped inside. You could at least apologize to them. I didn't it, mean for it to it, happen this way. I was just so angry. Exactly. It was and just then a mistake. The magic misfired, and I, I made him look like a fool, and now I'm a fool. And Ave kind of just like slaps him across the face. <laughs> See, isn't that fun? <laughs> Indeed, he jiggles when you do that. He does. <laughs> Except my glove is all now sweaty. I have to get rid of this. She looks over to Col she looks over to Koloff. Well, with the mystery solved of the giant face coming out of the water, if it was just merely a, a mage's mishap. I don't see why we should lock this man up for any real crime. It was just a mistake, and we happened to be in the crossfire. And Our worry was it was the work of the giant. Oh. But, if that's, but if this is not the case, then of that, you are innocent. Well, hey, there you go. There you go. All things resolved. Everything's better. No collusion with giants. No collusion with fishmen. It was just However, a happy coincidence. Captain Raoul of the of this uh, excuse me let me make sure I'm getting this right Ooh. Yep Captain Raoul of the Finn Swift has said he was looking for someone in this location someone who fits this man's description Is there a reason that he's been looking attempted murder I look at Koloff. <laughs> really? You, you wanted to hide that one, huh? I didn't do that. I didn't do that at all. All right, dude. We're going to need to figure out the... Uh... We're going to need to get to the bottom of this one. <laughs> Your Honor, if my client <laughs> steps in... <laughs> that did not happen. That is not canon. No, you don't understand. It was, it was not, I didn't kill anyone. I just. No, it's called attempted murder for a reason. I, I didn't know. That was, I didn't attempt to kill anyone. I just got really drunk one night at the bar. And uh oh. I, when I found out that Raul stole my fiance from me just before I was about to graduate, I, I admit that I was a bit neglectful of my fiance. I, I mean, I was trying to get things done just quickly enough so I, we could have a better life and, in comes Raul and just steals her away. I I got so mad one night that I started casting enchantment spells on statues all willy nilly. That last I remember, and then I remember getting chased out of the docks, and here I am. Well, See, it sounds, doesn't sound like any attempted murder to me. It sounds a lover scorned and drunk with sadness. Koloff. <laughs> <laughs> Who oh. among us? <laughs> no, go on. <laughs> Koloff, I'm going to tell you this. <laughs> You're going to have to deal with what you did there. You can't run away from that problem forever. Whatever you did, it needs to be solved. You can't take me back. He'll kill me. I look I look at Arahati. Or uh, not Arahati. Ave. I look at Ave Lo. Would he, would he actually kill him? I'm not one for knowing the customs of merfolk. Though, if he was kept under my jurisdiction, he would be safe from the time being of the captain's ire. All I'm saying is We just will hold him in, in our custody if he feels that his life is in jeopardy. I'm just saying that if, if this Raul guy thinks that his life is in danger because of this guy? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think he would want people knowing that. <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, I wouldn't. Admit, sorry, Koloff. I wouldn't admit to feeling threatened by this guy. <laughs> he gets it. <laughs> <laughs> you, you just you hear whoa. Is this what a show is? Yeah, do you like it? I'm confused, yet somehow intrigued. That's a show. Welcome. <laughs> if you, you uh. How long have you been looking for other dragons? I've been here 
I, I've been lost in the storm for I don't know how long. She like kind of just like nods her head, trying to like figure out what the calculations would be. It's been a few days now. I've lost my family, and I came to the mainland during the storm, and I hid in a cavern underneath the water here. Hmm. Well, unfortunately, the, the our only interaction with a blue dragon has been a while ago, and kind of far away from these yeah, waters. Quite some, quite some ways away. Although he was also a little displaced. And it's true. According he, to him, so according to him, anyway. And now he's way displaced. Yeah, that's what, what I thought you were talking how about. How did you... You didn't kill him, did you? No. No. Well, if he died, it wasn't by our hands. No, he got thrown off by a giant gold dragon. Bronze? Right? I don't know. I'm bad with colors. You know of another dragon? Yes. If it's no issue at all, I'd like to be guided to this other dragon. Well... He seems... He, how old was he? Ave kind of speaks up. He is of an ancient breed. I was going to say he's pretty old. Oh, he's an ancient worm. Please, I I feel it might be better if I accompanied you to at least speak to this ancient one. Maybe he would know and be able to assist me with my issue. Well, I bet the Navy would be able to do that. I mean, they know him better than we do. You will be escorted by us to right. You will remain under the water, and we will summon Lieutenant Gore to your position immediately. Hey. Right, we get to see Gore again. Yay! Perfect. And see, and I just look out the crowd, and one of you wanted us to slay her. I still kind of do. Well, you're a bad person. Eject that man from the audience. You watch Ansel <laughs> just pick him up and throw him in the water. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> you're going to love Lieutenant Gore, Miss Woe. He's just the best. He's the friendliest, nicest man I ever did meet. He sounds great, but why is the other dragon not so nice? He just had a very bad, angry disposition and uh, took it out on passersby. What was his name? <laughs> Hobbs Ravi. That's a childish name. It really is. You just like you see the dis you see like the the disappointment in her <laughs> face. Oh, you met a child. No, she uh, she she looks almost like the same kind of complexion and oh, okay. age as Pobs Ravi is. You can't tell age, obviously, yeah. from a dragon, but she looks about the same way as he did. But yeah, uh, if if it's another dragon you're looking for, our our friend Ave Lo here and uh, and the Navy would be would be the biggest help for that. She looks over to you. We'll discuss this later. I'm so sorry. <laughs> kind of pants on. She, she like just she just like like shakes her head like, don't be. <laughs> this is a great boon you've given us. Uh, meanwhile, I, I have some business with this uh, sunfish man. <laughs> Dear Lord, man, just uh, put our, it to our the hot, Our hottie's just sitting there just like patting him on the shoulder. They're there now. <laughs> You're not going to die yet. <laughs> and like the grand I don't know how to put that any lighter. <laughs> I mean, we're all going to die, but Right? <laughs> but wait, the and there's, there's thing of attack is you it's don't true. need to be reminded. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Huh. But, I mean, I, does, does that mean you don't, you, I, I can't enchant things for you? You did at least try to help me. Avelo just like shotguns her head to you and just like cocks an eyebrow. Yeah, that was part of the agreement that I would help him do this. We would get, like, this seems mutually beneficial on all fronts. <laughs> I don't see how I could possibly be in trouble for this. Did you actually graduate from your studies, Fish? I did, yes. I was supposed to be in a new enchanting guild officer. I'm also going to throw this out there. You little offensive. <laughs> little offensive. There are two fishmen here. It's kind of derogatory. Just... And I'm going to throw out that you now have an enchanter who owes you a life debt. Persuasion. <laughs> Modified 20. Lock him in the hold with some food, water, and a bed. Uh, b b before that, just part of our agreement had been we would get one item enchanted. Could we at least... Could we at least get that? Finish off our bargain here. I mean, you've you've landed an enchanter, a dragon, 
And, uh, you know... We got rid of the giant stone We got rid stone of the novelist. stone. I, I believe this is a fair trade. One item, but make it quick. Thank you. Wake, I believe you had an idea. Our hottie kind of just, like, sits him down, just gives him a nice blanket and some cocoa. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. You're so nice. I need this enchanted with a specific spell. I hold out my uh, compass. I need to be able to locate a creature with this as long as it's within range of whatever the hell the spell is. Let me take a look at the book real quick. It's within a thousand yards. It's within a thousand feet. Yeah, so let me see here. Dungeon Master's Guide. Get the skinny on this It's either locate creature or locate person. I I will tell you if that's plausible. Armor, blah, 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 blah. Said he was enchanter. He never said he was a good enchanter. <laughs> he was good enough to make giant rocks. <laughs> on accident. <laughs> on accident, yes. Yeah, but he was good enough to shrink it on purpose. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Okay, you know what? One more quick thing. I'm sorry I'm holding this up. No worries. I, d- I did, like, this is, re- <laughs> this is research I did in my own time. Yeah. All right, so the most he can do, he can enchant one item that does one level two spell of any class for one day. Okay, so it, so it can only do the spell once? It or? can only do the spell once per day. Once a day, oh, okay. Once per day, yeah, that's fine. Any, um, any level zero, one, or two spell of any class. Is locate creature I a level? I, I can't remember. I thought it was like level three or four, though. <laughs> locate, locate, locate. It's a four. 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 All right. That's it is a thought. level four spell, unfortunately. A tad bit stronger than we were hoping. Wake looks really disappointed. And there's Skrung just sitting there with a pie just (laughs) aimed at you. (laughs) Cool win, huh, Wake? He has nothing to say. He thought this would work. He doesn't know how magic, (laughs) he doesn't know how magic works. Oh no, no, that's fine. Magic levels are a confusing concept for <laughs> for those who live in the actual universe. Let's see. Ezra, who has never studied a second of magic in his life, kind of just shrugs like, well, do we have anything else that could be super useful? Hmm. My knowledge of the Arcana is perhaps my weakest trait, and I have a lot of weaker traits. <laughs> <laughs> Hmm? Oh, we're getting some uh, message. Oh, getting an oh. info here. Oh, yes. Hmm. That sounds cool. There you go. Is it something akin to what we were going for? Yes. All right, what, what, well, what, what is the spell? The counteroffer. Well, while he can't, locate an ob- he can't locate a person, he can locate an object. And there's a certain object about gross work. Mm-hmm. There we go. We're looking for the ring. Okay. So Wake falls that and just follow, and somebody... Somebody in the crowd's like, what about an object? <laughs> <laughs> Does he have a thing on him? Yeah, it's, we, we turn, there's, there's, we turn there's this Brundle, into crowd. Brundle right? in the audience. What about an object? Yeah, can he find <laughs> the ring? Can we locate an object? <laughs> <laughs> what about the ring? Can we locate the ring, maybe? Like, Scrum just, like, lowers the pie. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, well, uh... The object we are wanting to locate, <laughs> Skrung, I think, had the most intimate yeah, knowledge of it. Yeah, so he'd be able to describe best. And he can, he can uh, work with uh, Kolov to make this happen. Perfect. So, right, this, so this, leave, could, this could be your deal. Yeah, I leave my compass with them, and I leave my, like, basically I'm giving the compass to Skrung, because he's going to be the one who's like, where is it? Yep. Every time we go to port. All right, well, Arahati, Troy, and uh, Skrung and Kolov kind of, like, walk to the side as they try to, like, figure out this deal. Meanwhile, there's Woe kind of like looking off into the audience, just like, there's so many of you humans. Well, uh, hey, y- you know what? F- far be it for me to not take these lemons and make some lemonade. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity to speak to a, a real live dragon. Does anyone uh, have questions for, for a dragon? I'm, I'm sure. Uh, Ave Lo does. 
Where do you hail from, dragon? Where did you first come from? We came far from the north. There's a... Well, we... We don't really know, like our... For the longest time, we've only ever called this island dragon. You called this island dragon? The, I, the island we came from, it's the birthplace of all dragons on this planet, uh, mm. in, in these waters. Fascinating. So now you know that there's, you now and know that she hasn't, you have now, if you wanted to press her for it, you now have knowledge of the location of an entire continent where dragons <laughs> that originated the from. origin of dragons. I think it's pretty good to stay away from that. <laughs> I was going to say, I was going to say, <laughs> if anything, we'd mark our maps to avoid those waters. <laughs> I mean, we haven't even considered going north Though, of the continent. Though, to be fair, two out of the three dragons we've three out of the four dragons we've encountered have seemed, as far as we know, to, to <laughs> be on our side. One of them seems a little suspicious. <laughs> yeah, but we don't know that. <laughs> well, with that, uh, our hottie's pretty much just. No, I'm sorry. Uh, Ave Lo is pretty much just going to like keep it simple and like explain to the dragon what's going on. So she's gonna usher Wo to the side <laughs> to like. Try to like talk to her and figure out some more things. Meanwhile, everyone else in the audience is just sitting there going, Is the show still going? No, and, go home. And now it's time for our grand finale. Wait, what? Uh, How do you top a dragon? <laughs> like we can't even plan for that. You see you see Grammy in the middle of the in the middle of the the stage with a guitar. A solo by the by the Natural Wonders chef, Grammy. Concessions available near the back. <laughs> she raises her guitar pick. She plays the most fucking stunning rendition of Freebird ever. <laughs> <laughs> and we've been the Lockwood Natural Wonders. Just always remember, if you've got a laugh in your heart, you've got a name in your mouth, and that mouth is Lockwood Natural Wonders. She like picks up the guitar and like uses her tongue to lick the strings and throws <laughs> the guitar into the audience. I, yeah! I feel as free as a bird now. <laughs> I think I may have misjudged birds. <laughs> All right, well. Quite a confusing night this has been. Uh -huh. Unfortunately, poor Kolov has been put into custody. That's his fault for not hiding better. But at the same time, you did get your end of the bargain. Onslow <laughs> did come back with a few pieces of uh, armor for you guys. Yeah, that was that was going to be the next question. And with the knowledge of actually being able to make stuff. So if you guys find parts of animals, Onslow can make bits of armor out a of it. Clothes here. Uh, Onslow would be willing to teach anyone else who wants to learn that uh, skill as well, but it will take time. Mm -hmm. uh, I have to say, I am kind of shocked your rapport with the Navy has actually skyrocketed from this mission you have taken. <laughs> <laughs> well, we handed over a dragon and an enchanter, so I, uh, I feel a like... Dra a dragon and a felon. <laughs> <laughs> a felon, but... <laughs> But a useful felon. Yeah. Despite all of this, at the end of the day, you guys are all given a chance to rest. You pack up all your stuff. Uh, Ave is is getting ready to escort you guys and Wo. You see, like Wo, kind of like swim underneath the ships. She she's kind of like being like leashed by. On you remember from the Vorpal, like it had like a magic like little cloud of smoke where like magic was coming out of. Yeah, that is kind of like leading a small little like light underneath the water so she could follow it. Okay. Sensor vision's not that great. Uh, you actually like hear her bump into the into the ships every once in a great while. Like you feel like the rocking of the ship, and you just see her head, her nose pop up. Sorry. Did we um? So just so I'm sure that we all understand. Uh, like the Yeldon had been beached at one point. It was moved, but mm -hmm. Yeldon still wasn't talking at all. He's not talking. But he is, he is, it is not operational. So it's, it's operational. Okay. It works as a ship. It just hasn't been talking this whole time. Okay. All right. I just wanted to make sure that that was that was still the case. You guys have you guys notice anything different? Roll an intelligence check. I probably don't. Six. Thirteen. Six as well. Nah, it's fine. Everything's good. It's fine. fine. Though uh Everything's fine, right, Kevin? <laughs> How do you figure? <laughs> I, I don't know, like everything seems like it, the seas are calm, everything's fine. We <laughs> just put on a show, I guess. I Trying to figure out my anger issues. Uh, yeah, you're something fine. still something still feels off though. 
Unfortunately, that's too vague of a question for him to guess. <laughs> yeah. He has no truths for you. No truths there, Captain. Sorry. Uh, at this point, you kind of notice that uh, you're kind of short one person. Well, yeah, I mean, Golfer? Golfer's dead. <laughs> Perception, I'm going to, or investigation, I guess, I'm going to see who's, <laughs> who's around and who isn't. Excuse me. Yeah, Se- you're the captain. You should be taking bo- You should be taking roll. 17 on my roll call. Investigation, perception. What's not adding up? Polfi's not here. Oh. Did uh, anyone happen to check in with Polfi? Hear from her? <laughs> I know she has wings, so she could, you know, fly I mean, she to was just kinda, She was just kind of chilling around here when we were off doing everything else on the island. You kind of, like, see off in the distance. She's coming back. Hey! Uh, but she does have someone else along with her. Uh, hmm? She like uh, it's another Aarakocra. Oh, like okay. uh, uh, I was like, is she carrying something? No, a, that's big, impressive. a bigger, a bigger, uh, a bigger, more like uh, puffed out seagull. She's kind of like adorned in a small robe. Uh, she actually is carrying like a large arquebus on her back, and her feathers kind of like flip up in the back, almost like it's uh, what are the cockatiels? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. She's got like a little cockatiel like headdress kind of going rocking out right now. She's like adorned in nothing but gold rings and she just looks regal as she stands there looking at you all. Hey, I hope you don't mind. Uh, I kind of told my big sister where you guys were and about all the cool stuff you have. She kind of wanted to speak to all of you. How do you fly with all that on? Very well, sweetheart. She like pats you on the cheek. Oh. Uh- Hello, I'm I'm Captain Ezra Lockwood. Welcome to our ship, the Yeldon. How can I? Uh, she like help takes you? your hand and shakes it firmly. Yeah. She's like, "Oh, nice to meet you, Captain. Uh, My name is Mary May. Well, pleasure to meet your acquaintance, Miss M- May. Uh, how can I help you? Full name, please. You say it in full. Mayor May. Mary May. Mary May. Yes. Now, uh, it's come to my attention that. You all seem to have someone, a part of your ship, that my friends are quite eager to meet. Oh? Who would that be? She looks out to the lot of you. She looks over at Red. There you are, honey. Your mother's been worried sick about you. What? Mary Mae, it's nice to see you again. Like, Polyphy's looking between them, just like, you two know each other? Like, oh, this is so crazy. I have no... Mary Mae, who is this? I have no idea how you know her. I had no idea Red was a bird. I don't... (laughs) I don't think that's how it works. Are you sure? Like, I don't know. Are you on your way? Uh, she's like, now is just like lost all interest in talking to the rest of you. That's fine. Wait, she, <laughs> wait's fine. Have you, are you, so where were you planning to relieve yourself of the information you've been holding on to for this, so, for this whole time, dear? We were going to Bullcard. Uh, we were, we were going to Ibercall, but I assume since you're here, there's been a change of plan. Yes, the, the others would like to meet you and the rest of your friends over at Wright. Pontus is quite eager to see you and your findings. Getting a lot of proper nouns right now. Pontus is a... That's, Roll an intelligence that's check. That's a name, all right. Five. Natural wonders! Uh, Fifteen. My intelligence Pontus Ryle, that's bad. the name of the guy who contract the lizard folk to, take, to get all the ore. Oh, yeah! I remember that somehow. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if a lot of you are going to write, then I'm sure we'll all have a fun little chat. Don't worry, we're not here to give you any harm. I mean, no, that's that's terrible. We're not we're not here to rob you or anything. We would just like to make sure that our sweet little girl makes it back in one piece with the information she has, which is very dear to us and our organization. Are you? Or, um, sorry, as a first mate of the ship, are you, are you going to pay for the shipping fare? You know, Paul, if you paid. That's a good question, Wake. Ah. Uh, we, uh, unfortunately, this is, uh, you know, we do have to make a living. You, I'm sure you understand, but we can't just be, you know, shipping people across Sweetie, the way. we could fly. Why would we need to pay? Uh, that's a great question. And there's Paul, like if you want shrinks. Maybe if you want somewhere to land. I assume you can't, you know, you eventually have to rest at some point, and... Uh, the ocean's a vast place. And to be able to keep moving while you're resting is a 
Well, an advantage not offered most most natural creatures. Persuasion. Uh, modify 20. Oh, very well, sweetie. Hold on. She hands you a thousand gold. All right. This girl looks loaded. This, she, uh, like, her dress is, like, all multicolored. It looks like it was fabricated from different dyes. Yeah, Wade, do, Wade doesn't really care about gold. He just doesn't like her attitude. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. This, uh, this should definitely cover it. Um... Wake Eloy, if either of you would like to show our guests to a, to a vacant room, that would be fantastic. This will work. Absolutely. Uh, Nedra, <laughs> do, do you have any bags or anything? She like hands the, she hands the gun gingerly to, uh, to Nedra. All right, let's uh, show them to the executive suite. <laughs> that would be terrific. This seems like exactly their speed. Thank yep. you. Just don't uh, don't take them to golfer's room. It's still occupied. Yup. Sure, yes, it is. I <laughs> uh, take them down to Caster's old room, <laughs> which is great because that's still there. Yep. And uh, you let her take you let her take the bed. You are now housing someone. Red looks to the lot of you. Well, the good news is is that my journey is coming to a somewhat end this book can finally be taken from me and the burden of making sure that my life is no longer shredding in a very razor edge thread will come to a close. That must be a nice feeling. It is. <laughs> it is, Eloy. <laughs> you, you just like, see there's an air of like relief in her face, just like the fact that Mary May had showed up and she's just like, Oh, good. There, someone from the Volition is here. So, so you trust Mary May? This is a this is a person we don't have to you know side eye, be quiet around, talk or talk around things we've seen. Is this? I will mention this though. Don't uh, don't state that we know who Barabbas is. There's a little bit of a history between those two. Oh. Okay. Beyond that, your <laughs> Grant confirmed that for me. Oh yeah, that's a that's a that's a that's a numero uno. Natural wonders. So yeah, you're not even the first bird we've had on this. <laughs> as you say, as they're walking down, as fucking Mary May's face just turns one eighty. <laughs> you know where my husband is? We'll end there. <laughs> right on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ah, I'm so glad my rolls keep just. My role is hate red. red. As, as red picks up a dagger, it's just like I'm gonna kill him. <laughs> I'm gonna kill him. So we'll be right back. <laughs> there is <laughs> no possible way that my dice hate red this much. So, so the whole time you guys were talking about creating a distraction, I'm sitting there like, is Eloy there for this? No, because if he were there, he would say, you know, I can take care of this with an invisibility spell. They'll never catch him. <laughs> yeah. So, so therefore, Eloy's not there, because this sounds way more fun than that solution. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 fig I figured we'd finally get to, like, you know, we've been, po we've been posing about putting on a show forever. May as well fucking do yeah, it yeah, when no. we need to make a distraction. No, that worked yep. out, because when you brought up I will say this, a though. distraction, Ezra's initial thought was like, I'm sure if we just explain the situation, it'll be fine. We'll just <laughs> leave that Raul's guy's name out of it. <laughs> but I will say this, though. I want you, of all people, Me? to roll a 2D100. A 2D10. A 2D10. Yeah, oh, okay. I was confused there. I need right. you to roll it twice, though. As the, long as you have the double-digit one and the regular one, that way you get your... You're just looking yes. for a... Uh, you're just looking for percentile, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so we have 20. <laughs> 26. 26, okay. Oh, wait, 29, sorry. Yeah, 29. 29, roll again. Yeah, let's roll both of them at the same time. One of them has the double digit on it. 100. 100. Wow. On this other one. 29 one and 100. $1,290 from your performance. Hey. 1,200. Do we consider dollars gold? Gold. gold. Okay. Sorry about that. Bucks. B U X. <laughs> yeah. A new currency. <laughs> so no, Sweeping your per, your performance was not unseen. That's why I was doing all those side rolls. <laughs> well, thank you. It's and a little weird. Seems a little unrehearsed. <laughs> 
And Ezra's, Ezra's closing not the line <laughs> he has decided for, for shows are, if you have a laugh in your heart, you have a name in your mouth, and it's Lockwood. <laughs> <laughs> if you have a laugh in your heart, you got wood in your mouth. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Stay tuned for our next episode where we actually go to write and bring up the main storyline once again. <gasps> hey. Hooray! But before we go, we do have some fan art to show off here. All right. Yeah. And let's kick it off here oh. with Scrap Paper 22 and his rendition <laughs> of Kolov. Oh, oh, oh gee. Oh. I don't like any of this. I gotta tell oh, you. I'm just so. Oh, it's water so hot. I did so describe hot. him as strong, sad. Yeah. <laughs> oh. What do you think, the Nedra? <laughs> Punch. Okay, listen. Before we continue with that, we had a long conversation. We had a long about conversation this. about who was who. It was like what, 25 minutes. 25 like, minutes of who was each of character from Strong Bad and, and Homestar Runner. Yeah. Ezra. And of just... course, Eloy is Homestar. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, yep. I, you just capitalized the Z in his name and spelled it basically the same. Ezra. <laughs> <laughs> you done a good job there, Wyke. And of course, Koloff is strong, sad. I mean, you guys can fill this all yeah. in later, but <laughs> thank you very much, Scrap Paper 22. He's Pop Strogdor. He feels is, awful. Odd, odd Slow is fucking strong, man. <laughs> strong. <laughs> oh, <no, Hunter! laughs> Okay, next up by Dakota B and several numbers, aka Dakota Baker, we have a look into Wake's dream as he's staring up at the monastery that he was raised. Ugh. His master looking down on him. <sighs> I like the colors. <laughs> I don't like this. I don't like it at all. Either way, it looks great. Thank you kindly. Next up, and it might take a little bit of scrolling for me to find this one, but yeah. I saw this one pop up over the weekend and absolutely loved it. This is by Slime Glob, and we've got uh, Team Turf and Surf, or Surf and Turf, however you want to go with it. Uh, I love that Nedra's Tail has the bandage on it. Yep. Yeah, they're, they're ready for combat. I also like that they're kind of in, like, almost, like, futuristic armor. It, look, it looks like she has some, like, Ava plating he, on yeah. it. He does, a, like, I'll, I'll say this. Uh, Slime Glob does a lot of renditions of characters with different sets of armor and everything, but so far, like, they get the source material so correct that I'm just like, I don't care. This is great. <laughs> this is fucking great. Yeah, this is definitely MMO-style armor, and it looks great on them. It super does, doesn't it? It yeah. does remind me of, like, concept art for an MMO. Yeah. Cool Thank you kindly, on. Slime Glob. Looking forward to more. Like, wait, just scratching his head. Yeah, next up... <laughs> We've got Soundwave Eloy from the Unnatural Wonders, Wonders in Disguise, by RC Scooter. Pretty great. That is amazing. Yeah, he's got all the sound equipment on him. He is ready to blast you a tune, and that tune's going to blast you away. Speakers for legs is a nice touch. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess he turns into, like, a giant boombox, like, yeah. industrial style. Mm -hmm. Thank you kindly, RC Scooter. Next oop. Uh, we have probably, like, the best team name, and also <laughs> one of the most synergistic teams we could possibly oh, put yeah. together. <laughs> we have Red Rum. Because <laughs> even if Red were to strike Nedra with exactly. a Exactly, she could go, like, full fireball, and Nedra would still be standing there. <laughs> yeah, a level, a level five version of Firebolt. <laughs> yeah, and she'd, she'd, she'd just be just standing in the middle of it. Yeah, she could be doing, like, all the fire AoEs. Nedra could be standing in the middle of it and only take half of it, like, no Hi, matter I'm what. here. <laughs> yeah, this is by D1892739. Thank you so much. Uh, I absolutely fawned over it during the last fan art stream. <clears throat> it's great. The art is great, and the team name is fantastic. Thank you so much. Next up, another one. Probably like. <laughs> I love this action oh, pose for Nedra. Pose. It is sick. I really this love is, the thick line art. In yeah. This. this is by Jacko Kyle. With like that great action swing, this is this is like you know the last thing you see before you black out. <laughs> One of those situations. Black out? I think you mean just straight up die. Well, it depends <laughs> on how hard she's hitting you and if there's anybody around to heal you. Also, I'm gonna say this: I am very fond, like you were saying, the line art earlier. Mm -hmm. I am super fond of the fact that like whenever you do, uh, I don't remember if I'm gonna get this correctly, but every time when you do dark outlines, it mm -hmm. normally is the foreground. Right. Yeah. I am very impressed by how the black outline, even in the background, still somehow works, even though it has the thickness of a foreground yeah. black line, and yeah. that's fucking awesome. No, it's great. It looks awesome. This is one of my favorite pieces of Nedra. Thank you so much. Jack O'Kyle on Twitter. Next up, by Harkin Christian. Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> we have a horrifying look at the Predator-esque 
Dire Tigers. I did not expect the Tigers to look like Predators, but I don't give a fuck. It's I feel great like it's now. Somewhat no. how you described it, but you were just like, it's got like these mouths inside of mouths. It's a real nightmare. I kind of just, scenario. I kind of just felt like it was just an extra set of jawline inside the mouth, mm. and then people just made it out like it was a Predator. I'm like, you know what? Sure. Fuck it. No, sure. it works. It works. Like those pincers just hold you there as it gnaws you to death. Yep. It is incredible, terrifying, and I would not want to run into it ever, ever, ever. Not even in a zoo. Not with ten thousand plates of glass and plastic and <laughs> not bars even with between us. A whole us. bunch of me's. Uh, maybe with a little bit of it. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I take some hit and stare and at them, just and then go to the zoo and have a fucking yeah, day. Just have a great day. Have a great anyway, day at the zoo. Thank you kindly, Harkin Christian, for this nightmare fuel of a tiger. Mm-hmm. Mia. Next up, however, we have a different tiger by Marble Poison. Aww. Significantly Aww. cuter. <laughs> Still horrifying, but the yawn just makes it adorable. <laughs> it is absolutely adorable. Thank you so much, Marble Poison. Marble Poison, whose tigers were featured uh, last week on our thumbnail. Yes. Because they're so damn cute. Thank you so much, Marble Poison. Thank you. Allergies, man. Yeah, they happen. And they suck. Next up... Zito, <laughs> I included this for you because of your love of, like, you know... Looney Tunes. Yeah, Looney Tunes, and, yeah, just... <laughs> mi- yeah, Misfi- and Misfire Onslow turning into Daffy Duck. This is by Scandran and Zero One. Excellent. Just claps it down. Of course, you realize this means <laughs> war, boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh, some great Chuck Jones style there. Absolutely love it. Next up by Usagi the Bunny. We have, hey, you big dummy. (laughs) It's like the world's worst version of water skiing going on here. It's like going in at like half a mile an hour. Oh, no. Come on, guys. I said go. Let's do it. (laughs) He said slow. I like that he's just staring down. Like I like that there's just a staring contest going on between them. Man, fuck you. You're going to get clinked back so hard. You're my food. Stop talking to me. (laughs) Thank you so much, Usagi the Bunny. <laughs> Wonderful stuff. Next. Here. Oh. I need, this is a bit of a scroll down, but we have Winnie the It here. Oh, wow. <laughs> I love that Golfer's soul is just trapped. They're like, ah, let me go. Where am I? <laughs> no, you're mine this now. A, I got you. There's a small bag labeled souls. He's just looking down dejectedly. Oh, I'm out of honey. <laughs> I'm out of honey. I guess I'll get more souls. Oh, bother. Oh, bother. <laughs> Uh, delicious yeah. stuff. This is by Ramart underscore at Ramart <laughs> underscore. Thank you so Ramart. much for this piece. I love it. He's adorable. He's sad and he's horrifying. <laughs> Strange little Me? creature of nightmare. No. Yes, you. I'm a good boy. You got honey. And oh, last and certainly not least, we have by <laughs> Tanuki here. Yeah. Evil Wake. <laughs> That's all it's labeled is <laughs> Evil Wake. Just my, I, I I prefer like you know. Uh, monstrous wake or <laughs> feral wake? Feral wake. Feral yeah. wake is a feral good wake. Way. I, I was I when I first came up with it, I said ghoulish wake. Mm. Ghoulish or ghoul. Kind of ironic for a man who didn't believe in the undead for such a long period of time. <laughs> That's why I loved it. I'm just like, you know what? Fuck it. Wake the banshee. Yeah, we have feral wake here by at Tunuki T U N U. K-I you know, it's Twitter. always the recent converts that are the biggest <laughs> proselytizers. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's it for the fan art we have for this week. And again, uh, though next week is the first Tuesday of the month, there will not be yes. a Q&A next week because the Q&A will be on that week's natu- uh, bleh, 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 Natural Whoa. Friday. Natural Friday. <laughs> Casual Friday. Oh, shit, that's where we show up naked. Yeah. <laughs> All Natural Friday. God damn it. A very special episode. Watch us get Twitch banned live. Yeah, very, anyway. very careful webcam placement is uh, <laughs> yeah. the only thing. Yeah, we will Hold be on, hosting getting our up, next... Up to the blue screen. <laughs> just to be more inclusive of everybody else at the office who may want to participate, we'll be hosting our first uh, Casual Friday Q and A, and you can still ask D and D questions there, uh, but you can also ask questions, you know, that pertain to everything else TFS related. Because mm-hmm. I think that opens up a thousand doors on Discord. Yes. Yeah. So thank you so much for joining us here this week, guys. We're very appreciative to have you, and we'll see you guys next time at the table. Later, wonders. <laughs>